crowd of 70,000 is expected today at Memorial Stadium in Berkeley as two bitter rivals, the Trojans of USC and the 10th ranked Bears of California meet for the 79th time. But before we get to today's game, let's take you back two weeks ago tomorrow. An estimated 450 University of California students, faculty, and employees were burned out of their homes by a catastrophic Oakland Hills fire. It was the worst wildfire in U.S. history. Monday, the Cal Athletic Department announced it's donating $100,000 to the Fire Relief Fund, as Athletic Director Bob Bockroft explains. Well, Gary, I thought it was a unique opportunity for us uh, because we're one of the few units on campus that has a chance during the school year to do some things financially as a result of our TV exposures. And we talked it over as a staff and felt that it was um, uh, would be in our best interest as partners in this campus and with this community to take $100,000 of our rights fee from this game and to transfer it to a fund that was specifically set up to help our campus uh, uh, victims of the fire. Four football players were among those losing their housing. Well, that's Tightwad Hill, Strawberry Canyon. What a setting for college football. I'm Gary Bender, along with Lynn Swan. USC trying to avoid their first losing season since 1983. This is their second game against three straight top ten teams. It's getting tough, and it's a real tough year for them. And what really makes it tough is USC is so young. They're starting only three seniors. And one of the big problems with having a young football team is finding adequate leadership on the field to really get them over some hurdles. One man who is going to have to really come through today is Reggie Perry, number 16, the quarterback at USC. Now, he has great running abilities. He's got great how to escape ability, is that what you call it, Gary? That's right. Terrific when he's in the broken field, but his arm is of question. He is going to have to throw the football today, throw it accurately and throw it well. The defense for USC is really going to have to shut down this Cal offense. They have given up big plays throughout the season. They've really got to come together, shut off the big play, play tough, aggressive football. California off to their best start in 41 years. They've been ranked to the top 10 for three straight weeks, and here come the Golden Bears. excited here. Memorial Stadium as well they should be. A 6-1 and one football team. But they're trying to beat USC for the first time since 1985. You know, this is a football team that if they win today, feels they position themselves for a New Year's Day Bowl. They do, and they are deserving of a New Year's Bowl game. This team is really tough and plays some aggressive football, especially their defense. They will come after you. Today, they're really going to try and come after this USC football team to try and confuse Reggie Perry. But the man who is a real leader of this team on the field and emotionally is Mike Pulowski. He's a quarterback of the offense. He guides his team like nobody else could ever do it. He has a great attack in Russell White. He's got some terrific receivers and this young man always finds the way to lead this team to find the open receiver to get them over the hump he is a man that you can bank on in the game that's as big as today to get him over the hump well look at it this way the trojans have won 11 of the last 13 games they ended up in a 31 all tie last year cal missing a field goal in the waiting seconds of play lynn and i'll be back with the opening kickoff the golden bears against the trojans in just a moment hard battery now with more power when you need it most by Hewlett Packard keep those ideas coming and we'll keep making them look their best and by Sony where imagination and innovation create the ultimate in sight and sound absolutely sensational day for football USC won the toss they have deferred kicking off will be Cole Ford for the Trojans Russell White and Lindsey Chapman back deep. It'll be White from the five. And here comes Mr. Dangers across the 20, 25. Big hole up the middle of the 40. He's now in a foot race to the 40, 35, and knocked out of bounds at the USC 29. What a beginning to a football game. 66-yard kickoff return. But you shouldn't be surprised, Lynn Swan. He's had so many big plays. Last year, we covered this team against Miami, and White returned one for a touchdown. You always have to be a little bit afraid when you see the best two running backs on the football team, White and Chapman, lined up to return kickoffs. A lot of times you see people who are just specialists. But here's a guy who's used to taking hits. He times it up real good. Watch here. He finds a big hole, gets a block there by Chapman, and skirts to the outside. 
Fortunately for USC, they've got some people with an angle on White. Well, he said he feels better, and you can believe it there. Pulaski comes out throwing and tender for Damian Simeon, who is starting in place of Sean Dawkins, who was late for a team meeting. And there is Mike Pulaski. This guy has thrown 14 touchdown passes this year. He has the co-leadership for a season of 18 with Troy Taylor. That'll be one of the records that should be broken before the season is over. Sumult's going to get a lot of action at fullback. Trick's already the all-time leading receiver in catches at Cal. Hand off to Chapman. Chapman to the outside. He'll take it short of the 20-yard line. Boy, I tell you, Chapman is no drop-off. He's an outstanding player in his own way. This California offensive line is a good one. They have a nice mix between veterans as well as young people. Azine will be playing on Sundays next season, and they love Gordon. He's playing with a knee brace. Mallon can really run. He's a 4-7-40 guy at that guard spot. Third down, two yards to go. Pitch near side. Chapman falls down. So the footing giving way as Lamont Hollenquist was over there to be sure he didn't go any further. Loss of three on the play, so that means that Doug Bryan will come in and attempt a field goal. As you look at Ewell starting to place uh, the injured Mike Hens, who's out. Webb McDaniels, linebacking core is excellent. They can really run. Kurt Barber now is not expected to start the game. He likewise missed a meeting, but he'll be in there before the day is over. And the secondary of change, Gerald Henry, a true freshman, starting at corner. This will now be a 41-yard field goal attempt by Bryan, who's kicked 12 this year. David Ben to snap. Mike Pulaski holds. A kick is right down the middle, and Brian missed it. It looked like that was headed right through the uprights. It was wide right. And so Cal, after the 66-yard kickoff return, does not get on the scoreboard. USC with the football and Reggie Perry, the sophomore from Denison, Texas. He's thrown only one touchdown pass. He's still trying to find himself shoved into the quarterback spot. When Todd Marinovich left early for the NFL, we have movement on the right side. Tony Baselli, the right tackle, I believe, left before the snap of the football. Baselli, the outstanding redshirt freshman out of Boulder, Colorado. The next great offensive lineman for USC. They've had 24 All-American linemen that offensive line since 1964. This is Gordon Reese. Dead ball, false start, offense, still first down. Let's look now at the rest of this starting picture offensively for USC. As they come up to the line of scrimmage, now first and 15. There's Struther starting a tailback. Wes Bender, a Glendale Community College transfer. Morton, their leading receiver. Conway, a big play guy. And Yanni Jackson, who leads all the tight ends and catches for USC. Handoff comes to Struther, and Struther across the 20 to about the 24, and knocked down there. Offensively, this line of USC has some young people. Boselli is going to be something outstanding. Moody is just huge. He's 6'7". They list him at 295 pounds. He's a senior out of San Francisco, so he's back in the Bay Area playing today for the Trojans. And he is the only senior on that offensive line. Second down, 11 now for the Trojans. Strether has come out of the football game. They have only one running back, Bender, behind Reggie Perry. Two wideouts. Got a double tight end alignment. As Perry backs, got time over Bradford Banta, the tight end. Overthrown, and he is 6'6, six, six, so you got to get that ball up high. Let's look defensively at this Cal defense. They'll send everybody after you. It's a gambling defense. Ahanatu had a 49 yard interception a week ago. Travis is outstanding. They call Perry the Giants. Linebacking wise, Barsala has intercepted a pass in each of the last three games. And then in the secondary, look out for David Wilson. There's none better. Third down, 11 now for the Trojans as they go to the shotgun. Strutter has come back in along with Bender in the backfield. Bender in a slot. Perry on third and 11. Pressure coming. He's hit by a hundred, and the ball is intercepted. It's picked off by Jason Wilburn, and Wilburn's got it inside the 15 at the 14. Gary, Gidi Ahanatu precipitated all of that. Gary, we talked about this before, talking about what's more valuable to a team, sacks or hurries? Well, here's a case. Gidi Ahanatu comes in. He is going to hit Perry, all right? If they sack him, they've got the ball down there, and they putt. He hits him, deflects the football, 
Then Jason Wilborn comes over, number 39, picks it off. They possess the football inside the 20 of USC. Seven yard return. That's his first interception, but the 16th of the year by California. They've been able to precipitate 27 turnovers in the first seven games. As Russell White now tests the inside, takes it inside the 15, close to the 12 yard line. Tay is a defense that you could get some big plays against, but they'll get some big plays themselves. And so Cal right now with a golden opportunity, missing a 41-yard field goal after a 66-yard kickoff return, now with a second and eight from the 12. Now this is their second opportunity after the kickoff return by White. The first one they came away with no points. They can't afford to give up these great opportunities without getting points on the board. Russell White and Greg Zumwalt in the backfield. Play action, Fate Pawlowski rolling to the near side, gets a big block. He comes up to the 10, to the five, diving there. Very close to a first and goal. Jason Ewell and Jason Oliver over there for the Trojans. And Pulaski showing his toughness as he lowered his head. Boy, he got a great block from Steve Gordon, his center, doubling back to give him additional running room. It is a first and goal. Boy, Michigan State losing to Northwestern, who's won two in a row. Francis Pay has got those Wildcats going. A big upset over Illinois. Oh, they found themselves. Man. They wore all purple last week. You think they did this week? <laughs> if they thought they helped them win, yes. I bet they did. First and goal now at the five-yard line for the Bears. Pulaski has Zumwalt in motion. Play action again. Rolling near side. And he's going to throw it away. Zumwalt was covered in the coffin corner. And he had to get rid of it. Willie McGinnis was pressuring him from the linebacking spot. I'm going to take this opportunity after that play, Gary to kind of care, uh, compare Pulaski to Reggie Perry. You saw how Pulaski rolled out, always looking for the receiver. He didn't have an open man. He threw the ball away. Now, when Reggie Perry does that, sometimes he is too quick to run the football, doesn't look downfield, or might make the careless pass. That comes with experience. And you can see Pulaski really poised in that situation. Pulaski giving off this time to White. White inside the five. Touchdown, California. Russell White is one very big reason why a quarterback can be poised. He gives you some confidence, doesn't he? To know you've got that kind of running ability if your passing game is not right on target or to complement the passing attack. He gets excellent blocking from people up front and just runs over the last player. Troy Azeen, number 52, man of the game, a great block. Brian point after attempt out of the hole of Pulaski. The kick is up and the kick is good and it's seven to nothing. Russell White with his 10th touchdown rushing. So they capitalize on the turnover and they take the lead. So the Golden Bears on top seven to nothing. Brian to kick off. Cal's water polo team very good in marketing. They make sure they play these games right before a television football game. Now they dry off and come over to see the ball game, right? <laughs> Kickoff, Travis Hanna will wait, not bring it up. And at the 20-yard line, uh, that's where USC will start it. One thing that creeps into your thinking in this game, Reggie Perry could ill afford to have that kind of problem early in the game because he has shaky confidence anyway, and he suffers the interception, which is his ninth of the year, setting up the lead touchdown at this point. And one of the things he has to be acutely aware of today, Gary, is pressure from this California defense. Nobody gets back against this California Bear defense and says, I have all day to throw. He just stood too long in the pocket in that particular play. Ahanatu was the guy that really pounded him, and Wilburn then with the interception, and Russell White with a five-yard touchdown run. From the 20, Perry with the Trojans. And a flag thrown before the snap of the ball. I thought I saw movement between the quarterback and the center. I'm not sure, Gary. Dead ball, full start, offense. Still it looks like the down. center kind of hitched up as he was getting ready to snap it. And right now, I would think that Larry Smith's saying, wait a minute, let's get our act together here. We're on the road, we're playing a team that is probably as good as anybody in the country in this part of the country, except maybe Washington. And we can't start this way. We got to really get our composure here. Two possessions, they've already had two penalties. It was California that came in with an average of over eight penalties a game. First and 15 now from the 15-yard line. Play action. Nope. Hand off and still to Strutter, and he's stormed under. Jared Willard, who was out last week with a bad ankle, freshman out of Newport Beach, who they think 
eventually will be the best linebacker in the Pac-10. Made the stop. Now here's Barsala, number 13. Take a look. He sees the player comes off, aggressively coming into it. But this time, he is taken out. Some good blocking up front by the Trojans. That was Joel Chrisman. Now, these teams but don't like each going. other, do they? Yeah, you see them keep going there. They, oh. <laughs> a lot of hard feelings. Well, was Russell White said he hated him, and then Mike Klaus I hate him even more. Here's another flag. Forget the play. The play's been blown dead. The completion over the middle. You know, Looked to me like they had the left guard that time lifting up. Yeah. Well, Gary, we're talking about the motions of this game. A lot of that goes to points to the fact that a number of these players here at Cal were not recruited by USC and UCLA, and they always felt slighted. Now they're here at Cal, the program's doing extraordinarily well, and they want to prove that they were worth looking at all those years. Ball, false start, offense. Well, I tell you right Still now, USC down. could not have started this football game any worse. They open up with a 66-yard kickoff return against them. They did survive that. Then they throw the interception. Cal scores, and now they're all the way back inside the 10. They have, are you ready for this, second and 22. My goodness. You know, at the, at the opening of the game, I said they've given up the big play. First quarter, they've given up two already. And Perry needs some confidence, as does this young USC team. Pitch comes back to Struthers. Struthers gets some running room across the 15. Great second effort. He comes out of there. Deion Struther may go. Struther may take it all the way. This would be 92 yards. Chris Cannon dies, he doesn't get him, and what a reversal as Strother, 92 yards, puts the Trojans on the scoreboard. And there's not a flag on the field anywhere. What a development, it was just sheer determination by Strother that he stayed on his feet. Take a look at this, folks. When announcers or coaches talk about determination, not giving up and balance, they're talking about a play right here. Three Cal players are hitting him right there. Another reaches for him. He just stays up. His focus is straightforward. He's got that nice lean in his body. The only mistake he makes is looking back. He should know someone's coming up from behind. Just keep running, and he is in the end zone. 92 yards, point after attempt. Cole Ford to attempt it, and we are tied at seven. It looked like it was getting awfully dark for this USC team. Everything was going backwards. They had a second and 22 and a 92-yard run, and they're right back in it. Well, it's, that's what I meant, Gary, about Cal having to take advantage of whatever opportunities they get to score in this ball game, not waiting. USC has been a fourth-quarter football team. When we covered them against Arizona State, they didn't play very good. They lost the game, but they played a draw. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> You're getting choked up about this. Quarter. Yes, Sam, against Notre Dame. <laughs> Another great fourth quarter. So Cal has to get out in front if they're going to win this ball game and stay out there early on. Well, if you're asking, is that the longest run from scrimmage? It is not. The White Ford with 94 yards against Texas A&M of the Blue Bonnet Bowl. And then Zepp Lee also went 94 yards in 84 against Utah State. But I tell you what, Strother will take that one. He doesn't care if it's 92 or 94. Yeah, there's two things that a play like that guarantees for sure, Gary. One, that you get in the end zone, and two, that you get the oxygen on the sideline. <laughs> I tell you, though, I've never seen a team dig themselves such a big hole and come out of it as quickly as they did. Remember, that was second and 22. Second and 22. And people are saying, why not put the ball in the air? They're probably thinking, oh, my God, it's another running play. But they made it work. Well, this might be a high-scoring game. We asked the coaches. No one seemed to get a handle on that as to whether it could be. It's seven all. We have 10-23 left now in the first quarter. Cole Ford will kick off. Russell White is back again. Also, Chapman, White going back. He won't return this one. Well, we talked about the feelings in this game. We asked Mike Pulaski how special this game is against USC. It's special in the fact that I'm playing in it. I think every game is special to me. I'm never going to play that team again. And uh, I'm never going to play with these guys again as this team. And uh, that, that makes it special to me. You know, I love everybody on my team, and I'm going to play my heart out every game because I expect everybody on the team to do that for me. Therefore, every game is special. And he does play his heart out. I love this kid. He just grows on you, doesn't he? Mike Polaski, the Polish rifle, the guy who was considered to be the worst recruit coming out of high school in the Pac-10. He's setting up a screen, broken up. McGinnis, Willie McGinnis got those long arms. He's 6'6", up into the air and batted it down. They really need McGinnis. He's been out a couple of games with a bad ankle. He makes a big difference. Hurt that ankle early in the season. 
against Penn State. Did not play in the Arizona State game. If you talk about the linebacking core being the strength of this defense, Willie McGinnis and Kurt Barber on the outside are the best two linebackers on this football team, so they're going to make it tough coming to the outside and putting pressure on Pulaski. Barber is in on that last play. Comes out as they bring in the nickel guy, Hollenquist, the linebacker. Handle Russell White. White pounds across the 25 to the 28. Gideon Murrow made the stop there. Coming up after a game on the West Coast, it's third round coverage of the Tour Championship. And tomorrow at 2 Pacific, 1 Mountain, we'll continue coverage of the PGA's richest event with final round action, followed by a Jack Nicholas golf special presented by Nationwide Insurance. Boy, this is great golf weather here, isn't it? Sure is. Did you bring your uh, clubs with you this time? No, I left them at home. You know, I had a chance to meet John Daly, who uh, led after the first day of the tour. Well, you hit the ball off the tee just like he does. I, I was trying down to learn. To, here's White. He's got the first down. White to the 40. Now we have another foot race. He is to the 30. He is down to the 20. Russell White, 72 yards and a touchdown. Tell you one thing, Gary. There was enough postage on that special delivery. That's better than next day air. Wow. Russell White. Look how they collapse the line up front. Stefan Pace, number nine, is a man who had his hands on him and let him get out of the grasp. Chased him down the football field, and he just hugs the sideline. Hey, they're faking here. Pulaski rolling out, going for T, and he got it. And Chris Carpenter, the tight end. However, there is a penalty flag. Hang on. Bruce Snyder, a little wrinkle here early in the game, rolling out. Pulaski's pointing that it's against USC. We'll see. Illegal man downfield. That must have been not enough men or too many men on the field. Well, let's take a look. They line up like they're going to kick. Pulaski puts the ball down, just fakes it all the way. And you know what they call this, Gary? They gave this fake field goal, uh, extra point of name. They call it the Fiesta play in honor of what? The Fiesta Bowl. The Fiesta Bowl. Well, they won a New Year's Day Bowl. The Fiesta Bowl people are here. The Sugar Bowl people are here. A lot of people watching this Cal team. You understand why? Are they exciting? Oh, they're a tremendous football team. 15 to 7, the two-pointer stance. By the way, if you're wondering about Russell White's run, it was not his longest of the year. He had an 80-yarder last week. You know, folks, last year's football game against USC and Cal was a 31-31 tie. And Russell White played in that game, and he did not have a spectacular day. Rushing, White carried the ball 14 times for 40 yards, and he was very, very disappointed with his performance. Came into this ball game saying he wanted to make up for that performance, wanted to play a great game against USC. You think this game's had any excitement yet? <laughs> 9.32. By the way, Russell White's carried the ball four times for 88 yards. He scored two touchdowns. Also, that 66-yard kickoff return. So he's way over 100 yards in all-purpose yardage right now. Struther with a 92-yard touchdown run. White came back. His was only 72 yards. Oh, that's too bad. He's only averaging 22 yards a carry. I never had that for a ball game. Well, maybe one. The oh, Super Bowl. this is something. 15 to 7. Struthers' longest run prior to the 92-yarder was a 29-yard run last week against Notre Dame. Now, the and now we're going to have a penalty assessed after the two-point conversion. So they move the ball to the 50-yard line. And Mike Pulaski <laughs> grinning from ear to ear. Ryan will kick off for the 50 this time. Hannah is back deep for USC. Well, if you're just settling in, you've missed some fireworks here early. Here's Brian, line dry. There's no chance this will be returned. And it'll come out to the 20-yard line. Wow. A 66-yard kickoff return, a 92 and a 72-yard run from the line of scrimmage. You wonder what's left. Well, we're about to find out, I think, Gary. <laughs> no one's really put the ball in the air yet, so let's find out what Morton may do, what uh, Conway's going to do. Treggs, uh, the fine receiver for Cal. He's 131 yards away from the all-time receiving yardage record held by Wesley Walker. By the way, Wesley Walker's here today. He was inducted to the California Hall of Fame. Treggs comes in here 130 yards short of his receiving record yardage-wise. Maziel Royster now is in at tailback behind Wes Bender. From the 20 now, Reggie Perry. 
This will be Royster. And Royster will go for a couple of yards to the 22, and that's all. Royster trying to get back into that starting role. Struthers beating him out, and after that run by Struther, he certainly didn't hurt his cause. Eric Zumwalt was there to make the stop for Cal. Royster has had a lot of injury problems. He's missed four halves of the game, the entire Penn State game. But Struther has beaten him out, and I think Royster's really had to fight through that, hasn't he, Lynn? It's gotten him down a little bit. He really has. It's been well documented that when afternoon Smith came in and said to him I'm not sure if USC is the place you want to be kind of challenged him and he came back after that and played some hard football second and eight Perry in a little bit of trouble gets rid of it to Yanni Jackson the tight end he's out to the 40 nice hurdly move as he takes it to the 45 Wolf Barber who's a brother of Kurt so two brothers going against each other today over there to make the stop, that's a 23-yard gain. Cornell Collier was in the face of Perry, and I thought Perry did a great job at living his way. As we go back, the first touchdown was scored by Russell White after an interception by Wilbur, making it 7 to nothing. And then on a second and 22, Deion Struther went 92 yards to make it 7 all. And a moment ago, Russell White went 72, and that's where we are right now, 15 to 7. Pitch comes to Royster. Royster gets away from the linebacker to the 50, to the 40, and Royster all the way down to the Cal 32-yard line. USC nice job. having some success moving the football, running the ball. That's a 23-yard run after a 23-yard completion. And so now at the 32, right now, the defensive coordinators must be scratching their head. Where's the defense? Well, right here, you're going to see the defense is being blocked and having some problems. You're slipping and falling down. Great block on the outside there. You see another man's going to come over. Oh, actually, in this shot, you can't see him, but the Cal defensive man came over, tried to make the stop, and just slipped and fell down, Gary. So at the 32, first down, USC. Weister, very fine open field effort. 23-yard gain. Perry falls down, coming out from underneath center. Boy, this guy has had a malady of problems this year, battling back. They say he's very mentally tough, has a great work ethic, and they think that he's going to just get better, and they have the confidence that he is the guy. But place like that shake you a little bit. Well, he was calling an audible at the line of scrimmage. You saw how um, Major Royster was kind of leaning forward, trying to hear the play, and he just tripped up. I mean, he knows what's being said about him, and he wants to improve, and he just takes it as another reason for him just to work a little bit harder. Well, that's that self tackleization play that we saw last week at Auburn, right? Yeah. Second down, 15. Hand off to Royster again, and Royster close to the 30-yard line and knocked down by Jared Willard, just short of the 30. Collier was also there. There is Willard. Boy, he is going to be something. This defense of Cal will be even better next year. You look at the people they've got back and how this defense is played. They play that old bear defense, the 46 defense. They'll come after you. And we talked about that aggressive style. One of the best ways to negate that kind of pressure is to go right at them, and that's exactly what USC is doing on the ground. Third and eight. Craig Gibson turns around to talk to Perry. Here's a handoff to Royster. Royster is not going to get it. He loses a yard on the play. Cornell Collier, who's a real leader on the team, and you see also Barsala. Barsala was headed to Ohio State. Then he found out that the Big Ten rule is if you transfer from a junior college, you have only one year of eligibility. So he ended up here in Berkeley. Fourth down, Cole Ford will come in for the freshman out of Tucson, Salpino High School. And this is going to be a 49-yard attempt. His longest is 39, but talking to Larry Smith, he feels he can reach it from around 55 to 57 yards. We'll see what happens here. The kick on the way by Cole Ford, the true freshman, and the kick is no good. So Ford from 49 yards away. Misses with 6.23 to go in the first quarter. It's Cal 15, USC 7. Well, USC has played Cal more times than any other team in its 98-year history. This rivalry dates back to 1915 and the 79th meeting today. And what a beginning we have. Gary Bender along with Lynn Swan, 6.23 to go first quarter. Handoff comes to Lindsey Chapman, who's giving Russell White a blow right now as uh, Gideon Merle stops him for no gain on the play. And this is the 66th consecutive game 
and they've played and they'll play each other every year up until the year I believe it is 2003 when the Pac-10 scheduling rules will have them missing each other for two years and we'll both be there right to do absolutely the game? absolutely second down 10 15 7 Cal with the lead line of scrimmage to 31 Pulaski near side Sean Dawkins goes high at six foot four and brings it down first down of the 50 19 yard gain and Gerald Henry you knew they'd go after the true freshman Gerald Henry out of Carson California number 26 Gerald Henry is, is starting for the first time Sean Dawkins at 6'4 205 pounds I was talking to Pulaski and he said before the game he's watching ESPN talk about the smooth receivers he goes that's just the way Sean is he's got that great ability to go up in the air and get the ball but Pulaski gives him the opportunity to do it. Prior to that, he had 39 career catches going for 11 touchdowns. Here's Greg Zummel, the big, burly fullback, and he is close to the 46-yard line before he's knocked down. This is the guy the coaches had so many good things to say about. He's the rock of the offense. They call him the unsung hero. His younger brother, Eric, is a starting defensive back. Outstanding blocker. He missed the UCLA game with a knee, and are they glad to have him back? Second and seven. This is Chapman outside. Chapman tackled by Stefan Pace and eventually wrestled down very close to the first down. Willie McGinnis was over there as well. There is Pace who played so well last week against Notre Dame with nine tackles. It is a first down for Cal. Competition drives people in so many different ways. Obviously the competition against USC for Cal. But what I see at Cal, there's a great deal of competition within the team. Constructive competition where Chapman is trying to do better than Russell White. White's trying to make sure he stays ahead of Chapman. That's a good point. Here's a handoff to Chapman again. And Chapman, who's not all that big, moved the pile as he takes it inside the 35-yard line. He's 5'9", 180 pounds, and he picked up seven yards. What a nice change of pace to go from Russell White to Lindsey Chapman as Hollenquist was there to make the stop for the Trojans. There he is. He was uh, academically ineligible last year. Had a very impressive spring, replacing Anthony Wallace, who alternated that tailback spot last year with Russell White. And when Russell White was injured this year with his viral infection and, and not being able to play as hard and as long, you know, what a joy to have him in the ball game. Second down, a long four to go. In motion to the near side is called well. And there's a fumble Ruski, Eric Mallon. They call this a sugar rooski to be exact. And he takes it inside the 15-yard line. He's to the 13 and knocked down by Jason Oliver, 21-yard gain. The sugar rooski has yeah. been used. It has been used. The offensive coordinator Marucci told us he wanted to use his play. Take a look. Everybody's going to block down on the inside. The guard, the center snaps the ball, puts it on the ground. The guard, see him right there. He's picking the football up. Everybody's following the fake of the quarterback. Now he picks up the ball, and he just runs. Well, he runs a 4-7-40. They think he's the fastest lineman in the Pac-10. Pitch near side to Chapman to the 10. Tackle just short of the 5. Now, the reason they call it the Sugar Rooski is they want the Sugar Bowl people to be aware of it. Now, we'll show you. We'll diagram it for you here and show you exactly how it's run. Now, here's the way they line up. Now, when the ball snapped, the center puts it on the ground. Everybody begins to block down, execute the play. Then the flashing man is a guard. He picks up the football and runs to the other side. Number 63, Eric Mallon, 4-7 in the 40, former tight end. I tell you, Bruce Snyder has some wrinkles, doesn't he? Yes, he here's does. Here's a handoff to Chapman again. On the second down and two, the ball apparently came loose. California is saying they have recovered the football at about the five-yard line area. Eric Mallum, out of Pacific Grove, California, a sophomore, who they think they'll probably move to center next year when Steve Gordon graduates. He can run. He took off like he knew what he was doing. Well, you always want a guard to have good feet, to have some mobility to get out and pull and block. <laughs> He's got enough speed to run. Now, Third down in a yard now. He's so, he is so happy to have that opportunity, but you know what, Gary? He's disappointed because he didn't get to the end zone. He might get another chance this year. You never know. The old Sugar Ruski may be back in the playbook each week. Brian Remington, the blocking back, is in. Hand off to Zumwalt. Zumwalt, as a flag is thrown, has a first and goal if it stands. He was knocked down at the one-yard line. Remington, a big 235-pounder who used to be a linebacker to tight end. They use as kind of an H-back on that play. Holding, and that'll bring it back. So instead of being first and goal at the one. 
Take a look at the hit laid on Greg Zomo. He comes through the line. He's got good power, but he just caught, hit right in the chest, and driven back. That was Matt Key who unloaded on him from Arc City, Kansas, their leading tackler. He's just been a workhorse for this football team. Outstanding javelin thrower in high school as well as for the USC track team. Replacing a pretty good football player, a guy who I love to watch play last year in Scott Ross. So the penalty now makes it third and eight. Larry Smith exhorting his defense, he troops on it. Now, wait a minute. We're going to have a timeout called. Timeout USC. 2.15 to go in the first quarter, 15 to seven. So Larry Smith calling over this young football team, starting two seniors on defense and one on offense. That's a, it's a real young football team to expect so much out of, but the tradition in the history of USC says, hey, you come out and you play. So they've been trying to do just that. So he is going to get better and better with this team. Looking now, Washington ranked third in the country. Unblemished in uh, Pac-10 play. Cal trying to stay on their heels. UCLA has won three in a row. How about Washington State? They've started to move very well. They've won three in a row. But uh, Larry Smith made a point last night. He says, we're still mathematically in the race for the Roses. That's right. My question to Larry was is in reference to, you know, how do you motivate this football team? And uh, if you're starting to look towards next year, or what, you know, what do you tell him? He's saying, hey, we're still in this. We can go to the Rose Bowl. Because he played, they play Cal today. They have UCLA and Washington coming up. He says, if we beat all of them, then the tiebreaker situation, you go head to head, they've got wins over them. And then he has to wait and see if someone else <laughs> could beat them for a second loss. You like his reasoning, you don't know how sound it is. Yeah, but when you're the coach, <laughs> you've got you've to make that point and drive it home. Cal, on the other hand, has to have Washington lose one and also tie one for them to have a chance to go to Pasadena on New Year's Day. Russell White comes in on a third and seven now. They can pick up a first and goal at about the four-yard line. Back to throw, Pulaski inside the Sean Dawkins to the five. A flag on the play as he scores. Let's wait on this one. A quick slant inside to the six foot four sophomore. I have a feeling it's going to be against Cal. Almost like a pick play, wasn't it? Well, it was set up to be a screen. You saw the people coming out. They built a little wall to the outside. The receiver comes back, makes a catch, and go inside. Now, a pick play is illegal. So if someone came out and made contact with the defensive back, walled him off while the ball was being thrown, it's a pick play. And Pulaski signaling touchdown. Be picked up. And it is. The ball was thrown for offensive pass interference. The ball was caught behind the line of scrimmage. Touchdown. So Dawkins with his 12th touchdown catch of his career and the explanation now to Larry Smith. Now we take a look at it. They're saying the pass was caught behind the line of scrimmage, and it was. So it's a legal play. It's very quick. Executed extraordinarily well. It's a touchdown. John Dawkins, who didn't start the game, I think, uh, you think maybe uh, Bruce Schneider got his attention? He's playing well early. 21-7, point after attempt coming up. Brian, 31 of 32, coming into this game of PATs. Nails that one. 22 to 7. Two minutes, 10 seconds left in a wide open, high scoring first quarter of play thus far. Well, this has not been easy for Larry Smith. I talked to him about it, let him put the season in perspective for us. I will tell you something. Right? Last time uh, that I've gone through, <laughs> it's tough a time. It's probably the first year I went to Arizona. And uh, they had uh, probation problems and, and academic problems, and it was a real struggle. And I think this year has been as taxed every bit as much. Uh, it's a good group of young people, and I think the future is very, very bright. But getting through this year, I mean, I see some light at the end of the tunnel each week. Now, if it just comes down, and you know and I know that the best solution or the best medicine for any woes of any kind is just plain win. So plain win is what he had in mind, but now down 22 to 7. That was a 10-play, 69-yard drive, taking 4 minutes and 13 seconds. 11-yard touchdown toss from Pulaski to Dawkins. Pulaski now with 15 touchdowns for the year. As Bryant will kick off. Conway and Hannah back deep. 
Curtis Conway is going to take this one. He'll come up to the 10, 15, big hole, 20, 25, and up to the 27-yard line. Every time somebody gets in the open field, you think they may break one here. That's a 24-yard kickoff return, and Tim Manning made the stop, and he's dialing long distance right now. This guy is so impressive. He is the toughness of this team. He's kind of the conscience of the team. He seems to be able to get really the temperature of what's going on. He speaks for this ball club and plays for him so well. Yeah, I was going to check it, but I had that first sound. I said... Can he eavesdrop a little bit there? So he was going to check it on first down. I mean, he was going to call a different play, but change his mind. Perry now, quick side, trying to set up a screen to Travis Hanna. A flag late coming on the play. I tell you, Cal had deployed themselves, strung that one out very well. Chris Cannon was over there defending. I think they're going to call rough in the passer on number eight. Well, that would be Cal. Ray Sanders. Ray Sanders. Chris Snyder looking in. Boy, he took a program that was in disarray, and he's got him now ranked top ten in the country. Hoping to end up New Year's Day playing in a bowl. Next Saturday, 12.30 Pacific, 1.30 Mountain, ABC's football will bring you another key Pac-10 matchup when these Trojans from USC host a team that uh, everybody's excited about. The Huskies of Washington, ranked number three in the country, and many people feeling maybe the best team in the country. You arguably could get into that debate. Check your local listings for the game in your area next Saturday here on ABC. I've watched some tapes of Washington. I've not seen them in person, but they look awfully good on tape. They look big, strong, they're fast, are a well-disciplined football team. And defensively. USC, USC will challenge them. Boy, though, I tell you, their defense is something. Number one in the Pac-10. Here's a quick pitch, far side to Strother. He wants to throw, half-back option, up the field, way underthrown, intended for Larry Wallace. Strother got dumped after he threw the football. That was Barsala pouring through. Boy, is he an athlete. He was a wide receiver, believe it or not, in high school. Watch this hit by Barsala. We take a look. Barsala is just playing hard football. He's coming through. He sees a pitch. He wants to make sure he doesn't just sit in that pocket and throw the football. He was hurt early in the year. Took him a long time to catch up, but he is caught up. He had an ankle injury. They talk about his instincts. He said he's always seemingly where the football is, and there was an example of it. Second down and 10. 154 left in this first quarter. Conway in motion. Reggie Perry, a blitz coming up the middle. They pick it up, almost intercepted by David Wilson. That would have been his fifth interception of the year. He was there. He just couldn't hang on to the football. Reggie Perry setting up solid in the pocket. He had got, if he had gotten that ball there, the receiver would have picked up a sizable gain. Take a look at it here from the end zone. Reggie looks very confident here. Now watch Perry, 25, right in the center of the screen. He's just floating right over in the middle of the play. Well, the blitz by Barsala really messed it up. Wilson playing as well as anybody in the country. He is the senior out of Los Angeles. Leading tackler. He's done it all for this California team. Third and 10, a near miss on the interception. Perry from the shotgun, protections there, far side, catch is made by Travis Hanna, and Hanna goes out of bounds short of the first down. He went out of bounds at the 50, a gain of eight. They needed 10, so it's fourth down. He had to go high for that one. Well, he had to go high for it, but he also should have gone far enough to pick up the first down. You know, it's third, it's third and 10. It does you no good to make a catch for eight yards and go out of bounds. You know, you take a look, he went up high. People might question whether or not he got in bounds. Let's watch. Catches it in one foot right there. But again, he's short of the first down. If he's going to come back for a pass like that, he's got to go up 12 yards and come back to 10. Ron Dale to punt the football for USC. His first punt of the game. Back is Brian Triggs. He has it at the 15. Triggs to the near side to the 25. A flag as he is hit and dropped at the 26. 11-yard return, 35-yard punt. Triggs hasn't touched the football prior to that time, but you know he will be in this mix before it's all over. He's something special. Flipping against Cal, so they will not start from the 26-yard line. Well, if you joined us late, you missed something. 
Seven to nothing. Russell White scoring after an interception. Struther then on a second and 22 went 92 yards, two yards off of the USC record. And Russell White said, I'll go 72 the other way. Made it 15 to seven. And then Dawkins on an 11-yard touchdown catch. Now 22-7 with a minute 34 left in this first quarter. A lot of weapons by Cal, not surprising. The big play thus far for USC was that run by Struther. And of course, after that second touchdown by Cal, they went for two instead of one. And did it very effectively as Pulaski hitting Chris Carpenter, the tight end. Cal always huddles up on the sideline on their first play on a series and comes onto the field like this. Never huddle up on the field. From the 10 after the penalty, give to Zumwalt. Zumwalt going to be tackled by Matt Gee. Also, Stefan Pace is up there, and he may have gotten a yard. They told us that Zumwalt would get a lot of work today, and uh, thus far he has. He's averaging 8.2 of a carry coming in here. And when he's been healthy and been ready to play, he's been a tremendous player for this team. And they like his attitude and his work ethic, so this is more or less a reward for him, making sure he carries the ball just a bit more. Boy, he gives him some toughness. He, as they said, is a rock back there. No gain on the play. It'll be second and 10 from the 10. Russell White back in the backfield. Play action fake by Pulaski. Throwing. Tricks goes up. He's got it. And for Brian Triggs, that's his 154th catch of his career, 22-yard gain. And Mike Salmon, the sophomore out of Phoenix, over to make the stop. Triggs is one of those guys who kind of eggs you on. He is such a combative guy. Well, when this young team started coming together, he was more or less the voice of the team expressing a great deal of confidence in what he felt he could do and his football team could do. Defensive players don't like it. Rubs him the wrong way, but he follows through. Yes, he does. Pulaski just gets rid of that one because of pressure coming from Matt Gee. To go back to Triggs, he needed 130 yards coming into this game to tie Wesley Walker for the all-time yardage receiving record. Probably be hard-pressed to get that, but it'll be done before the year is over. Here's what's happened thus far. Child's possession, USC is 29, 15, 20, their own 20 and 31. That missed field goal was after a 66-yard kickoff return. And Cal couldn't capitalize on it. Hand off this time to White. Here he goes. The race is on. Jason Oliver trying to get the angle on him, and he'll catch him at the 15. Face and a man. flag, I think a face man. Jason Oliver, the sophomore from Bakersfield, had an angle on Russell White, and he prevented the touchdown. White just went 54 yards. This guy's in a track meet. You get great blocking up front, but then what does a back have to do? You gotta make somebody miss. Right there, a great move on Mike Salmon, number 24, makes him miss, and then it's just a sprint. And right here, Oliver comes over and grabs, reaches on, grabs the face mask, and pulls him down. Right here, you see him come over, just reach up and grab it with his hand, and pulls him down. Do you realize, Lynn, he already has 142 yards rushing on only five carries? That's incredible. <laughs> That's amazing. As I said earlier, again, he wanted to make up for a game last year where he only put in, came out with 40 yards. Yeah, well, he's making up for it. He had 166 yards, four touchdowns last week on that 80-yard run. He's had a 72-yard touchdown run. Mike Swanson, our statistician, has put the computer on it. That's an average of 28.4 per carry. Cal was given a sideline warning that time by the officials. Too much demonstrating going on over there, getting them off the field. First and goal at the nine. Give to Chapman, who gives White a break. Lindsey Chapman inside the five, tackled close to the two. McGinnis is over there. Ten seconds left in a wild first quarter thus far. Boy, Chapman is a different runner than White. He just poses different problems for you. Yeah, he's scary. <laughs> he's got that kind of speed on the outside. Now, coming into this ball game, Mike Pulaski needed four touchdown passes to pass Troy Taylor as he all, with the all-time touchdown record. He has one throwing it to Sean Dawkins. Be interesting if they see close in, if they give him the opportunity to throw another touchdown pass. Second and goal from the two. Give to Zumwalt. Flag on the play. Zumwalt is denied the end zone. Flag flying in there, and you see the time left. Big hit in the middle that time by David Webb. He's not very big, but he plays very well for USC. Holding. 
Well, they had this happen earlier to them when they got down to the one and had to come back. They were able to overcome that. Bruce Snyder looking around and saying, well, let's see, what weapon do we want to use now? Pick one. He's got an arsenal, doesn't he? Yep. Wow. I tell you, this Cal football team is something. Losing only to Washington. Best start in 41 years. In this particular, in this particular situation, I think we can probably look for Pulaski to take the ball, roll out to his right. And try to throw his 16th touchdown pass of the season. Try and throw it. Try and throw it either deep in the end zone or a receiver trailing. He knows he doesn't have to go for it all at once. And now they're going to let the clock expire to bring us to the end of some special first quarter. Outstanding first quarter. 22-7. California leads the Trojans. The California Golden Bears in this first quarter, 263 yards in total offense. 211 on the ground as we start the second quarter. Second and goal from the 11, hand off to Zumwalt. Zumwalt to the five, fights his way inside the five to the three. Brian Williams made the stop there, the true freshman out of Dallas. There's the 263. Yes, and you know, it, What's so amazing is 120 yards for USC. That would be outstanding in the first quarter. Also, the one turnover for USC where Cal came in and scored their touchdown. They have been tremendous on scoring points after a turnover this year. Uh, and the turnovers, they scored 114 points. And they add another six. So it's now up to 120. 121. Third down goal. Russell White comes into the football game. He's going to get the football. Running to the near side. He's going to be tackled from behind. What a play by Willie McGinnis. Out of Long Beach, McGinnis showing his quickness. You can see why Larry Smith talks about how much they miss him, the sophomore, so active as he rolled out and caught up with Russell White. He's going to lose the yard on the play. He's got the great ability to cover, to pursue with that kind of speed. He wards off tacklers. Then he can just chase people, as you see there, from behind. Well, that could be a big stop as they're going to uh, settle for a field goal here. It'd be a 19-yarder, a bad angle on the near hash mark. But to stop them from scoring a touchdown, very big in USC's thinking right now. Ball's down. Ryan's kick is on the way, and he's got it. And on Tightwad Hill, they fire the cannon. And it's a 25-7 game. And this California football team marching towards a New Year's Day Bowl. And if you don't like to watch Cal play football, you don't like football. They have so many things they do well. And you talk about the people up there on Tyquan Hill. The stadium looks like it's pretty much full. They had a capacity crowd against Washington. And that's a very important consideration when you're looking at a New Year's Day Bowl. Everyone wants a team that's playing for a national championship that's a winner, that's going to have a good competitive ball game. But the bowl committees want a team that will bring a crowd of people. But before they do get to New Year's Day, they've got to finish out their schedule. USC today, they've got to go up to Oregon State, Arizona State, and then play Stanford down in Palo Alto. The game, as they call it. The game, yes. Well, on that last drive, which covered 84 yards, a big play was a 54-yard run by Russell White. Took him eight plays, three minutes, 19-yard field goal by Doug Bryan. So White has a 72 and a 54-yard run. Cal has a 25 to 7 lead. Let's see, we ought to keep a log of the big plays in this ball game. Now, we're already up to about eight, aren't we? <laughs> Ryan getting ready to kick off to Conway and Hannah. Just underway, second quarter. Boy, he hit this one a ton. Wow. Is that Sacramento? What direction is that? <laughs> They're going to bring it out to the 20-yard line. That might be all the way down to Santa Barbara. Okay. At the 20 now is where USC will have it. Looking ahead, Monday night here on ABC, Jeff Hostetler and the Giants after losing that tough one to the Redskins. Head of Veterans Stadium to meet the Eagles. Jim McMahon is back. The Mike Pulaski talked a lot about with us yesterday. He likes the toughness of McMahon. A very key game in these two NFC East Division rivals. Against the 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, Monday Night Football. From the 20-yard line, handoff to Raul Spears, and the fullback gets a couple. 
So USC with one big play thus far. The 92-yard touchdown run by Strether. They've turned the ball over one time. They need to get something going here. Trailing 25-7, 13-15 to go first quarter. Travis and Bowers on the stop. Desmond Howard in the bid for the Heisman has 19 touchdowns on the season. Total, that's receiving as well as running the football. He's shattering every Big Ten record. Perry back, going for all of it. Johnny Morton, the intended receiver, but he's out of bounds on the near side. And Wolf Barber, the lower and younger brother of Kurt Barber, defending very well. There he is, Wolf. Now, what's his real first name? His real first name is Lavaris. No wonder he calls himself Wolf. But uh, the, sto the story has it that when he was born, he was a very hairy child. And an aunt, you believe that? I heard that I, I last night. It. And an aunt said, God, he's got so much hair, he looks like a wolf. <laughs> and, you know, when you have a name like Lavaris, if you've got a choice, maybe you go by the nickname Wolf. Lesser of two evils, right? <laughs> That's it. Third down and eight. Boy, he's a fine player coming from Pasadena Community College. Has a couple of interceptions. Perry on third and eight needs something good to happen. He's got some running room, throws far side, nice play. The completion coming out to the 35 to Joel Scott out of Houston, the junior. That's only his fifth catch of the year and a 14 yard gain and that is a big building block for this USC team. Chris Cannon making the stop. Now, we've talked a lot about Perry and the problems he's had throwing the football. Some of his passes have been high. But we also, I should also say in this, being a receiver, he can't always leave it up to the quarterback. These receivers have to go up and get the football. It might be a little high, but they've got to make the effort. There's the numbers on the sophomore thus far. That one interception. Back to throw, deep drop. And he's on target again. It's Johnny Martin, their leading receiver. Morton came in here with 30 catches, and he has it at the Cal 45. Cannon on the stop, a 19-yard gain. And I'll tell you, Perry looked very smooth on that play. Well, he's dropping back in. They've, they've had him sprinting out, rolling out, doing half rolls. He's got, he's become very comfortable dropping back in the pocket. And that time, he just stood there, watched his receiver. Morton makes a good break, comes back away. Now he's looking for the extra yardage. That's against Cannon, number 18. He's been their clutch guy, Morton, out of Torrance, California, a sophomore. First down at the 45. Perry on the option. He's going to keep it. And he breaks one tackle and does a nice job moving the ball to the 37. Wolf Barber up to make the stop an eight-yard gain on the play. Perry can run with a football. You know, for a long time, Vince Evans always talked about how well he ran for Cal. In 75, he gained around 240 yards. And already, Perry had 278 coming into this game. So he can run and run with the best of them. Remember Vince Evans? Boy, talk a guy. He was the strongest looking quarterback I ever remember. And not only looked strong, he was strong. Big arms. Second down, two yards to go from the 37. Strother and Strother fighting for the first down. Great second effort, got it. That was determination. And Jared Willard was over to make the stop first down. And right now, USC's putting it together. And Strother with that carry has reached the century mark. 100 yards on four carries. It's, it's amazing. Last year in this ball game, Mazio Royster carried the football quite a bit for USC. He came out of the game with 24 carries and 175 yards. You know, Todd Marinovich was a quarterback. He threw for over 200 yards. It seems, if you're looking at last year and this year, we've got to have individuals making the big play in order to win. Well, this is tailback you, though, isn't it? I mean, you expect that. First down at the 32. Perry back again. Blitz coming. Barsala. And Barsala's got him. Well, I tell you, Barsala shows you some quickness there, didn't he? Out of Canton, Ohio, a loss of 11. Looked like he also may have twisted his leg a little bit. Reggie Perry was a little slow getting up. Take a look. The blitz looks a little bit delayed. Maybe Barcelo's blocked, but he's going to come right through the middle on this, on the blitz, and he just wraps him up. At that moment, Reggie Perry just sort of fires the ball away. You know, to show you the respect for this guy, he never played it down, and yet in the preseason polls, he was picked to be the Pac-10 defensive newcomer of the year. So they knew his credentials. His pedigree was very good. Second down and 22 yards to go. Perry over the middle. Makes a connection at the 35 to Yanni Jackson, the tight end, so they get some of it back. They're about four yards short of the first down. Mac Travis 
was in the face of Perry that time. But I tell you, Perry right now, and watching him in the second half at Notre Dame and today, you can see he is growing. He is really starting to feel much more comfortable at quarterback. Yes, yes, he is, and he is he has to play a very good game today and execute and show that growth if he's going to keep USC's offense in this game. Third and 14, just short of the 35-yard line. Single running back is Bender, the fullback. Perry rolling, got people after him. Barsala's there again. But first to get there was Ahanatu. Chidi Ahanatu, a Berkeley native who was a rugby player in high school, had an interception last week, and he's come up with another big defensive play, a loss of nine yards. Let's take a look. People are getting blocked. You see right there, Chidi Ahanatu gets blocked. He gets up, wraps up his legs, and then Nick, Mick Parsala comes in to put the finishing touches on him. Looks like they're playing with 15 people, doesn't it? Oh, it does, because every time they get blocked, Gary, they get right back up and keep going. Fourth and 24, the punt by Dale. Ryan Triggs is back at the 10, fakes the fair catch. The ball will make it into the end zone. And at the 20-yard line, Cal will have it. 44-yard punt by the senior, Ron Dale, out of Boulder City, Nevada. Undefeated Washington risks its national title hopes against Pac-10 rival USC, plus other regional action next Saturday on ABC's College Football. Memorial Stadium on the campus, University of California, the Golden Bears and their homecoming leading 25-7 at halftime, the Prudential Halftime Report. Mark Jones, Bo Schimbeckler catch up on scores and highlights. Here's a handoff to Lindsey Chapman, and he'll be run out of bounds at the 24. Going back to that halftime, trouble at Auburn. Well, Lynn and I were down there last week talking to Pat Dye, and the trouble revolves around a former Auburn Tiger defensive back, Eric Ramsey. He will speak up. Pat Dye will respond. And uh, that's a troubled time down there at Auburn. And you wonder how they're going to survive all of that. Be interested in hearing what Eric Ramsey has to say. Here before, he has not come out and addressed the public on this issue. Second down, six now for the Bears. Malaski. Over the middle, rifles at the Carpenter, the tight end. And Carpenter playing for the injured Brent Woodall makes his second catch of the game. He caught a two-pointer earlier. This is an 18-yard grab. Mike Salmon made the stop. So Carpenter, sophomore out of Spokane, apparently the tight end next year when Woodall graduates this year. Look at Washington, 31 to nothing. It's just the only game that they've had any trouble with Nebraska and California. The rest of them, they've just absolutely rolled and handled terrorized him first down at the 42 Pulaski back again looking on target and the catch is made by Chapman Dave Pulaski's putting some heat on the ball right now gain of two that time David Webb number 44 was over there in his face as he threw the ball Pulaski has made himself a player he lost about 10 pounds from a year ago. Very outspoken guy. Came in here with a pause, haircut, an earring in his ear, and everybody said, who is this guy? The Rambo of Strawberry Canyon. That's right. But he has won the hearts of his players as well as the fans here in Berkeley. Second and eight. Setting up the screen, and it's to the near side to Chapman, and Chapman, no place to go, and still on his feet. Giving ground, and Merle finally gets him down. He may have a face mask against Gideon Merle as Chapman gets out to the 40, and he did a lot of running on that play. Lost five yards, but let's see what the penalty's all about. If it's against USC, he'll lose five and gain 10. There's the face mask. That screen just never did get underway. Let's look at the face mask violation. We'll take a look at the end. I mean, this is Lindsey Chapman trying to get away, presents so many problems for this team. Trojan football players trying to do everything they can to stop him, and in the effort, they get caught for an inadvertent face mask. Gideon Merle, they consider him to be their best linebacker out of Palm Springs. He's really been hurt, too. Had, that, had an ankle injury that kept him out for quite a while. Gordon Reese indicating the face mask violation. And they're going to step the ball out to the 49-yard line is where it's going to end up. It'll be a second down and three yards to go. Make it a long three for the Bears. Russell White in the backfield. 
Cal coming out with White, coming right up the middle, and White gets it into the USC end of the field at the 47. It was Merle again on the stop. Well, we talked about Jim McMahon earlier playing for the Eagles on Monday night, and we asked Mike Pulaski if McMahon is kind of his role model. That's part of all of them. You know, uh, everybody's got their strong points. You know, I'd like to have a quick release like Marino. I'd like to be smart like Joe Montana and tough like McMahon. Uh, when, people, when people make the comparison, I don't mind it because I think McMahon's a heck of a quarterback. And any time they want to compare me to Jim McMahon, they're more than welcome because Here's, I think that's a great comparison. You know, they can compare me to any of those guys because all those guys are great in their own right. Well, as Mike was talking there, Russell White on one of his great against the grain runs, but there's a penalty flag. He eventually was knocked out of bounds at the 25 by Jason Oliver, but it's coming back. A penalty against Cal. Against Cal. And I'll tell you one thing about that, that little sound bite by Pulaski. If he is all those things he'd like to be, he's going to be rich like Michael Jordan. He'll be playing on Sundays, won't he? <laughs> so Pulaski handing off to one of his weapons, White, but they're going to bring it back. Ohio State and Iowa, that's big. Of course, Iowa trying to overcome that unbelievable tragedy that occurred at Iowa City yesterday. The students losing their lives, the assassin there. They were talking about they couldn't have possibly played that game if it were being played in Iowa City. Instead, it's in Columbus today, but you know, the Hawkeyes came into that game, they took everything off their helmets. They're playing with totally black helmets in agony over what happened yesterday. Pulaski giving off now to Russell White and White to the 50-yard line to knock down. Still be about 13 yards short of the first down. Gee and Merle on the stop. You see the time remaining. It's 25-7, California. A first quarter that saw the Bears amass 263 yards to take a 22-7 lead. And White just simply brilliant. And he's getting a breather now. Bruce Snyder patting him on the back as well he should. Trips formation to the near side. Second and 13. Now Dawkins to the top of the field. Pulaski setting up to Triggs. Triggs has got a convoy across the 40 and tackled short of the 35 by Stefan Pace. Had he not snuck in behind that convoy, that play may still be going. It's a 13-yard gain. We have Kurt Barber down for USC back at the 40-yard line. Now, let's take a look. We saw it before. Sean, Sean Dawkins scored on the touchdown in this play, and he gets behind his wall. There's only one man to the outside from USC, but he's got a Cal, defend, uh, Cal offensive man with position to block. If he had been able to scoot out, he would have been in the end zone at this point, but when you design a play like that, you always drill it into the receiver's head, stay behind that blocking, that's where it's going to be. That's Barber, they're looking him over. The outstanding senior will be back, 25 to seven, California. Well, some concern over Kurt Barber, the outstanding senior from Paducah, Kentucky. We're going to go back and show you how he sustained that injury on the last play. There he is, number 98. He's going to get blocked and go up in there and now watch his left leg as it hits and just buckles underneath him. And back to the live action. Pulaski, nice fake throws intended for Triggs at the 22. And it uh, does not make the connection. That's a big loss for USC. Kurt Barber, an outstanding player nominee for the Butkus Award, man who's just really anchors down the strong side of that defensive linebacking court. And you know his brother Wolf is concerned, standing on the other sideline. Lamont Hollenquist has come in to replace Barber. He is the junior out of Linwood, a former safety. Now they use the linebacker in a lot of their nickel defenses. Second down, 10. Zumwalt goes in motion. Hand off to Holly. This is Marty Holly breaking out of the open. And he's got a first down to the 22. Stephon Pace made the stop. 15-yard gain for Holly. That only carried the ball six times prior to today. He played some when Sumwalt was hurt and couldn't play at fullback. Now watch the hole here. Everybody gets blocked down, pushed to the outside. And then number six comes up, Marvin Pollard, to make the stop. Pollard is the senior out of Carson, Banning High School. He did make the stop at the 22. So Holly getting his uh, moment in the sun here at the 22-yard line. Velasquez has Remington to motion, pitch far side, Zumwalt. Zumwalt makes his cut. He's to the 15 and hammers it 
inside the 15, but there's a flag on the play. Boy, he made a decisive cut and took it straight up the field. Matt Gee was over there to make the stop. See Zumo. why they like this guy. <laughs> Holding against Cal. Zomot's not afraid of that contact. He takes a great deal of pride in the way he blocks people. Hates to miss a block. Hates it when the little small cornerback comes up and makes a miss. Told us that at the, as we were preparing for the UCLA game earlier in the season. So when he turns the corner and sees an alley, he just puts his head down and runs straight ahead looking for somebody to hit and knock out of the way. Boy, the only problem Cal's had all year is penalties, and they have another one here. Tonight, after the new episodes of Who's the Boss and Growing Pains, it's a two-hour Kamish movie special. You'll love the special personality of the Kamish tonight on ABC. They had last week 11 penalties for 130 yards. They have another one here. Brings it out to the 31. It's now first to 19. Velosky getting a lot of protection. Throws over the middle. It's complete to Mike Caldwell. Caldwell fighting for additional yardage inside the 15. And a late hit coming. I think Steve Gordon, the center, hit Hollenquist too late. And we may have a personal foul against Cal after the 17-yard gain. Well, Cal's fired up. We talked to Larry Smith last night and analyzing this game, what he thought. He said, knowing they're going to come to this game with a lot of emotion, knowing they have always been a team this season with a lot of penalties, he says, just be calm, let them get the penalties, and let's take advantage of them. Well, it was a personal foul. It was Gordon. I saw him come in way late on the play and just literally run over. Watch this now. And what Caldwell is fighting for extra yards. The play is still live. All right, so you USC players are coming over trying to make the stop. Now he's down. The official's ready to blow the whistle. And yeah. then Gordon. Gordon's off to the right. You can't quite see number 56. It came in late. And Snyder doesn't agree, but I think it was a good call because he really did come in late. This is the second consecutive drive for Cal that has been pushed back as a result of penalties. That's what I was saying. That's the only chink in the armor is their penalty Excuse situation. Me, third, third drive. Line of scrimmage now back out to the 28-yard line. Second down, 16 yards to go. Look at the penalties already by Cal. Eight for 87. That's something that uh, somehow they've got to work through. Hand off this time to White. White with that bolt up the middle across the 25. Boy, he is so quick. Quist and Salmon on the stop. Look at this. Ohio State, John Cooper's team. Now, he's... The winner of that game still very much in the hunt for the Rose Bowl. Of course, Ohio State finishes the year with Michigan. Oklahoma up over Kansas State. And the Jayhawks with a 31 to nothing lead. That makes you happy. Third down, 12 yards to go. By the way, Barber has a sprained left knee. He's out for the game. Here's White. He's certainly not out of this game. He takes it to the six. First and goal. What vision he has. You know, he's big, he's strong, he has good speed, but he sees so well. And, and he doesn't look like he's running that hard on that particular play. But he's picking his way down the field. And there's Kurt Barber, number 98, sprained left knee. Well, he didn't start today. He missed a meeting, or I shouldn't say missed. I think he was late to a meeting. He was late for a meeting. He was, they started another player. He came in after the second play. So it hasn't been a good trip for him to Northern California. Here is Pulaski play action. Didn't fool anybody. Throwing incomplete to Zumwalt. Just inside the goal line. It was McGinnis who was in the face of Pulaski. Good pressure by McGinnis. Bring up second and goal. Jason Oliver defending on the play against Zumwalt. As Barber will leave. I talked to his brother Wolf. He said they've been talking on the phone all week. And Wolf said... Well, I hope for my brother is that he plays a great ball game. I want him to play extraordinarily well. Great shot by Bill Webb and Jim Russell, our guys, seeing the other side of the picture. You know that Wolf is concerned. Second and goal from the six-yard line. 25-7 Cal trying to build their lead. Pulaski corner up and out of the back of the end zone. Sean Dawkins couldn't make the catch and stay in the end zone. Well, that's the man you have to go to. He's 6'4", and as we said earlier, he'll go up for the football. We'll take a look at him. Man-to-man -man coverage on this particular play. He just needed... He really didn't need that move, Gary, right there. That, that early move. He should have just really pushed him to the outside right away. The ball comes in. He might have had a shot at it. The ball had just been thrown a little bit earlier. 
take another look. He makes a catch, but unfortunately, he's out of the end zone. Well, Oliver, 5'11", Dawkins is 6'4", tough to defend against him. Third and goal, just outside the five. Pulaski, the other side, this time, and Tricks can't make the connection, so they'll have to settle for a field goal. Now, even though it was incomplete, Gary, that was a pick play. <laughs> I haven't figured out what is a pick play and isn't, because they use a lot of those kind of plays. It's a pick play if you screen them off and get caught, and you don't look like you're going for the football. <laughs> okay. You look like you're going for the football, and you screen off the guy, and the ball goes to the other receiver. Usually, we get away with it. It's the old thespian in them all again, huh? That's right. 23-yard field goal attempt now by Brian. Brian tried a 41-yarder earlier, you might recall. Kick out of Pulaski's hold and right down the middle. And Brian having an outstanding year, replacing the All-American Robbie Keane very capably. 28-7, California. Cal, as you probably know, plays in Memorial Stadium, but there are 13 other NCAA stadiums with the name Memorial or have Memorial in the title, including the home of the Trojans, Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. Okay, Gary, name them. <laughs> Time out. <laughs> Kickoff now by Brian, and it's going to be Conway. He'll bring it up to the 15, to the 20, 25. Here we go, 35, 40. And he brings it all the way up to the 45. And I'll tell you, they're getting a lot of mileage out of their kickoff returns. Scott Roseman over there to make the stop. Conway. 38-yard return. Conway is a terrific talent. He's a backup quarterback. He starts a ball game at, flank, at the uh, flanker position. You know, he runs a 10-3-9, 100 meter in the Pac-10 championships last year. He gets a great hole here. All he needs is one more block and he'd be on his way. And as long as you have this kind of talent and capability, you have a chance of coming back in the ball game. Well, they really got him involved last week. He made eight catches. but only has 13 for the year. So against Notre Dame, they lighted him up a little bit with that big playability you're talking about. From the 45, handoff to Strother. Nice effort by Strother. Great broken field run as he brings the ball to the 46. Cornell Collier over to make the stop. I'll tell you, Strother has thrown a touchdown pass this year. He threw it against Washington State, a 25-yarder. He's done a little bit of everything, and now Iowa's taking the lead. What a big game that is. And now Florida. I'll tell you, Florida, by the time they get to the end of the season, there won't be any SEC race. They are really rolling. Second down, one yard to go. Hand off Strother, and he's not going to get the first down. Barsala made sure of that. Strother is one of those guys from the Skyline High School in Oakland who they say didn't have the great breakaway speed, and yet today we saw him go 92 yards. He scored from 29 yards out a week ago, but he has a nice combination, Lenny. He has that inside ability as well. Well, he's got good strength to run inside. He picks his way downfield very good. You've been watching examples of that throughout this ball game. He has enough speed to get to the outside, as we saw early on. What Larry Smith likes about him is that he's a coachable kid. You can instruct him, he works on it, and he just gets better and better at it. He says he's a hungry runner, which I thought was an interesting comment. Third and two, and Raul Spears gets the first down for the Trojans, just short of the 40-yard line. You see the time remaining. Barsala yet again with a stop. 28-7, California. They led 22-7 after the first quarter, gaining 263 yards in that initial 15 minutes. Well, football is one of those games where you can never just kind of sit back and say you've had enough when you talk about hunger. You've got to keep going after it. You see the score here is 28-7 with USC's history of this season being able to come back with a strong second half. 28 may not be enough. And I think uh, Larry Smith may be addressing that very issue in the locker room when they have two minutes left here in the first half. Back to throw is Perry. Perry near side. Intercepted. It's picked up. And one with the ball is Eric Zumwalt. The other half of that brother combination, and he takes it to the 40. 17 interceptions by Cal this year. Their second of the day. And a 25-yard return by Little C, the sophomore Eric Zumwalt. Now well, Little Z just zapped him good. There seemed to be just a bit of confusion on that play as Perry was calling it. His tailback was looking, leaning forward as if he couldn't hear the play. But he just dropped straight back in the pocket. It's just trying to throw the hook here to Morton. He fires it, 
Morton's really got to come back for this ball, and Zumwalt steps in and takes it. He'd have to come back a long way, Zolin. Oh, yeah. Well, you want a hook, you got to stop and just keep coming back until that ball is there. Woloski trying to capitalize on her. He gets up to Brian Triggs, and Triggs inside the 25, knocked down to the 24. And Pulaski with a 15-yard gain. Jason Oliver, very courageous young man, lost both his parents a year ago in a length of 26 days. Now taking care of his brother Clinton, nine-year-old, a sophomore out of Bakersfield. First down, Pulaski, time, throws, complete to Chapman. Chapman to the 10, to the 5. Oh, as he go head over heels. Mike Salmon was the guy that knocked the legs out from under him. 23-yard gain, and he looked like something you would see from the World Gymnastics Championship. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Mike Salmon is so disappointed. He says, what do we have to do to stop these people? And this could have been another touchdown pass from Mike Pulaski. Great catch here by Lindsey Chapman. That's what I mean about the receivers, Gary, having to make the effort for you. And here, he just gets up into it. Wow. He took a tuck, didn't he? If Herman was legal, he might have just jumped right over. Russell White comes in, first and goal at the one. Velasquez trying to capitalize on this turnover, gives it to White, he's in, but there's a flag. Russell White off left tackle, scoring. But let's wait, let's see if the celebration is premature. Velasquez indicates it's against Southern Cal. And it is, so the touchdown will stand. And Russell White with yet another touchdown. Three touchdowns on the day for Russell White. 11 carries, 176 yards. Now the point after now by Bryant. They have the swinging gate. We think they're going to kick it. They may try the Fiesta play again. And here they swing over. And they will kick this one. We think. 34-7 <laughs> now. Russell White, by the way, last year had 177 yards against Stanford, so he's one yard off of his career best rushing wide. Point after is good, and it's 35-7. There's another flag, however. Another flag. Let's wait to see who this is against. Guess the question that comes through your mind right now, how good is this Cal football team? Only Washington has beaten them, and Washington might be yes, the best the in the country. Good. There are two fouls on the play. Dead ball, personal foul on the defense, and a dead ball, personal foul on the offense will offset. The 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. So they do not take the point off the board, so it stays 35-7. Larry Smith's team trailing with 1.13 to go in the first half. Well, we were talking and documenting how effective California's been after the turnovers. Now add another six points. They have 100 and, uh, what do they got now, 125, 127 points. If you, do you count the extra points in that? I don't know. That's a good question. I think you do. Okay. Well, anyway, they're over 125 points they have scored after a turnover. Zumwalt picked off the ball. They went 39 yards in three plays. Took 41 seconds, and Bryant added the point after. It's 35-7 Cal. And there'll be no return here. That one's in the parking lot. 113 to go. A little shorter than the one that went to Sacramento. And my direction's mixed up, I think. <laughs> well, that's well, north. Let's, let's that is you. north. Let's go up to this point. After White had returned a kickoff, they didn't score, but then Russell White did from five yards out, the first to three. Then Struther. 92-yard run on a great effort, made it 7-all. And then White came back 72 yards to make it 15-7. to seven. If it wasn't over there, Sean Dawkins, an 11-yard touchdown catch, made it 22-7. Ryan added a 23-yard field goal. A moment ago, Zumwalt with the interception. White with one yards, one yard on the run up the middle. The point after, 35-7. That's where we are right now. Hand off to Struther. And Struther Uncle. able to make it out the 25. The ball is loose. Who's got it? Cal? Nope, USC. USC's got it at the 26-yard line. 
And when when, De when Deion Struthers ran that ball for the touchdown, Gary, you got the feeling this was going to be a race. Both teams are going to come be come at each other. And even in the next couple of series, USC moved the football against Cal, but they came away with no points. Timeout is now going to be called by California. They have two left, as does USC. Spears is the guy that recovered that errant ball. They got away from Struther, and they'll have it just short of the 25. Well, what was encouraging about that, they dug themselves such a big hole. It was second and 22 when Struther went 92 yards. You know, the question you have now is Reggie Perry really struggling? He's thrown a couple of interceptions. Would you think about bringing in a true freshman, Rob Johnson? They've been giving him more practice time. Uh, they had him warming up last week at Notre Dame when uh, Reggie was hurt. Would you bring in a Rob Johnson? Do you want to save the year, or do you think maybe you got to maybe look at somebody else? Well, you know, we tried to find out a little bit from Larry last night, and we talked about that, trying to give him this year as a redshirt year, some experience at practice, but not in the game. But he said, I've got to play this year as this year. I've got to win for this year. So if I have to use Rob Johnson, then I put him in the ball game. Well, they're very excited about him. A 6'4 freshman out of Mission Viejo, the brother of Brett, who's now at Michigan State. You know, we've seen the wave. Yep. All right? We've seen Cal do this. I, I, I call this the escalator. <laughs> they go up to They top. just go up and down, just up to the top and down. They've got some creative crowds up here between Stanford and Cal, don't they? Oh, between the Stanford band. That's right. What a loose bunch that is. Here's Perry's numbers thus far, the two interceptions. On a second and five, deep drop. On target to Morton, he makes the catch at the 30. Looks like he's got the first down, and he does. Seven-yard game. Ray Sanders made the stop on Morton. And so now they're going without a huddle. You see the time remaining. USC has two timeouts left. They stop the clock to move the sticks. And we'll be putting it back into motion. Gordon Reese in no hurry to do that, though, is he? Here we go. From the 31, from the shotgun again is Perry. Over the middle, and Struther makes the catch. Covered immediately at the 35, a gain of three. Ball coming loose, a flag on the play, but the uh, ball was dead there. The penalty flag at the 35. Collier and Barsala were over there making the stop. Let's see what the penalty's all about. Personal foul, face mask. Chris Pollock, number 77, was a man who came over and knocked down one of the defenders for Cal. They think <laughs> here at Cal that should have been a little unnecessary roughness. Reggie Perry continues to take his share of punishment. We'll take a look. He's got to throw the football. He's finding a receiver short. And watch a man just crab right there. Number 72, Chidi Anatu. And Snyder over there uh, saying, okay, now what's happened? It's the only thing he can complain about in this first half is too many penalties. Other than that, it's been a brilliant first half by his football team. And the complaint of penalties is a whine because he's been talking about it all year long. So first down, just short of the 50-yard line. Again, Perry going up the middle, broken up, almost interception. Barsala almost had his fourth interception on the deflection. Johnny Morton couldn't hang on to it. Johnny Morton, usually a very sure-handed receiver, he came across the middle. Have the chance. He should have caught this ball. Boy, this is a tough situation for Reggie Perry. You talk about an education of a sophomore pushed into service when Todd Marinovich left early. Didn't get that time to kind of absorb all of what you need to absorb as a starting quarterback. He's 7 of 13, 81 yards, and two interceptions thus far. Second and 10. Got his side on that one on the near side. Intended receiver was Struther. Good coverage that time by Cornell Collier. But Mac Travis, number 58, was the guy up the middle. They were talking about Mac Travis and how effective he's been. They think he's playing as well as anybody in the country. Halftime, a story documenting what's going on in Auburn. Highlights, Mark Jones and Bo Schembechler. We look at the top 25, and of course, we'll update you on that Iowa-Ohio State game, which is very, very big in the Big Ten. Third and ten. See the time remaining in the first half. Trips formation, top of the field. Perry's going to go to those three guys over there. And Chris Cannon almost had an interception. Cannon has three for the year. And with 11 seconds, 
That one just hit him right in the bread basket and he couldn't hang on. Reggie Perry has overthrown a lot of receivers. When you have a situation like that, he takes the ball and throws it as far as, his, as he can into the end zone. But he's got to take something off of it here to give his own guys a chance. He's got three Trojans playing short. He's got Cal playing deep. And it's a deep man that has a better chance at the ball. Well, one thing about it, you're not going to let a receiver get behind you in that situation. And Cal really did a great job. All three men were deeper than the receivers. It's fourth down now with 11 seconds, fourth and 10. Scott, Conway, and Morton to the top of the field. Perry being flushed out. And that's going nowhere. Five seconds left, so Cal will get the football on downs. Real pressure that time from Ahana to and Wilburn. Now, I can tell you right now, they're on the sideline talking about what we should do. I will tell you that I know for sure the players in the offense for Cal's team are saying, what the heck, let's try and put one into the end zone. But I would believe that Bruce Snyder would say, okay, there's five seconds left. We have a big lead. Well, they're going to do it. <laughs> Maybe we just take the football and fall on them. Well, you look at their formation. You have Dawkins, Triggs, and Russell White as a three-receiver set at the top of the field. So they're going to try that old Big Ben play. What did you call it in Pittsburgh? We didn't call it anything because we were so far in front, we never had to use oh, it. Oh, get I out guess, of here. I guess you might call it a Hail Mary. That is terrible. Don't <laughs> give me that. Anyway, the Big Ben play is in... Uh, right now for California. Pulaski's going to those three guys. Dawkins closest, the ball is up, and he couldn't make the catch, and time has expired in this first half. 35-7, Cal will return with halftime activities after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Welcome those of you watching USC Cal to the Prudential Halftime Report. Let's get you caught up to date on some scores and a big story in the Big Ten. Northwestern defeating Michigan State 16-13. That's the first time since 1986 that Northwestern has won two games in a row. Bo, hey, what do you do with this team? Do you break them up or they're power? <laughs> well, Michigan State's having a miserable year, but even at that, Northwestern beat Illinois the week before comes back and beats Michigan State. I think it's a tremendous thing for Fran Fran Francis Pay, the coach, who's had a tough time there. But when you look around the country, Vanderbilt uh, down in the southeast has won a couple of games in a row. Rice in the southwest has won a couple of games. You know, uh, parity, it's not complete parity, but it's coming close. Oh, there's a P word creeping up on everyone again. In another major story, Fresno State came into the game against Utah State undefeated at 7-0. They lose 20-19, this game being played in Romney Stadium in Logan, Utah. Now to the top 25, Florida State meeting Louisville, number one ranked Florida State. That game at 8 o'clock later tonight. But the big story, the injury list out of Tallahassee. Casey Weldon will not play, did not make the trip. Edgar Bennett, he is out. He's week to week. Mancini also is injured. And it continues after that. Three other injured players, Knox, Coase, and Baker Bow. Just tell me, how serious is this to their national title aspirations? Well, Casey Weldon made the trip, but he's not going to dress for the game. I think those injuries are probably enough to keep them out for Louisville, but they really don't need them for Louisville. They play South Carolina next, and then the following week, you can almost rest assured, Mark, all of those people will be back in uniform in preparation for Miami. Miami uh, with uh, Florida State's number of late. And speaking of the Hurricanes, they do not play this Saturday. They are ho home next Saturday against West Virginia. The Canes have won 13 consecutive games. Arizona State meeting Washington. The Huskies with the best defense overall in the nation. And their offense is pretty solid as well. Billy Joe Hobart hits Mario Bailey for a 15-yard touchdown in the score. That makes it 28 to nothing. And they have tacked on some more points. It is now 38 to nothing that game in the third quarter. Purdue meeting Michigan in the Big Ten, and Desmond Howard continues to roll right along. He is virtually unstoppable. Watch him on the flanker screen here. Takes the pass from Elvis Gerbach and rumbles 47 yards. He's so dangerous after he catches the ball. That made it 14-0 for the Wolverines. They go on to win it 42 to nothing. Elsewhere in South Bend, Indiana, Notre Dame taking on Navy. Navy coming into this one 0-7. It is 17 to nothing now for the Irish. At Jordan-Hare Stadium, Auburn meeting Florida in an SEC battle. Auburn under a sea and a mountain of controversy. Pat Dye, his staff, in trouble right now, apparently. And the score, 17-3, Florida leading in both. Just how tough is it 
for Pat Dye to carry on his day-to-day -day routine under these circumstances? Well, I don't think he's um, a very effective coach right now. That thing is a mess down there, and you can't sit there in your office and make plans to meet a team like Florida when you have to ask, answer questions from your administration. You have tapes coming out that are accusing your coaches of illegal uh, inducements and things like that. It's just an absolute shame, something that you don't want to happen in college football, but it's really uh, made things uh, terrible for Pat down there, and uh, it's going to be difficult the rest of the season for them. Boy, really tough. Uh, we continue to follow that story as well. In the SEC, in front of nine bowl scouts, Alabama defeats Mississippi State 13-7. to Bama improves to 4-1 and in the SEC. Penn State not playing this week. They take on Maryland next Saturday. That game being played in Baltimore. They are 32-1-1 against the Terps. In Folsom Field tonight in Boulder, Colorado, a game with Big 8 title implications. Colorado meeting Nebraska. The Huskers have lost six out of the last seven games against ranked teams. In Memorial Stadium, the game you're watching California pounding USC 35 to 7. It is a Russell White clinic at the moment. Iowa taking on Ohio State in a Big Ten battle in front of 95,357 people in Columbus. That is a new stadium capacity record. It is 13-9 Iowa and Rice is trailing Texas A&M 38 to 21. Trevor Cobb, the third leading rusher in the nation, has gone over 3,000 career yards. Well, we'll be back with more of the Prudential Halftime Report. Hope you stick around, but first sit back and have a look at some more scores from the top 25. And on. And by Apple. Makers of the Macintosh family of personal computers. With the Campanile as a backdrop here on this beautiful campus, University of California in Berkeley, and it's been an outstanding first half, homecoming-wise, for all the lungs, as this California team has erupted to a 35-7 to lead. I'm Gary Bender, along with Lynn Swan, and we'll be interested to see what's in store in this second half, as California with so many weapons. Looking at the statistics in the first half, you ready for this? 414 yards, and we're halfway through the game. I'm telling you, that's scary to look at. To see 414 yards, 273 yards rushing. I mean, White and Lindsey Chapman have just been tearing up this stadium this afternoon. Now, USA still has 135, 81 yards passing. I really have to believe that in the second half, Gary, that number 81 yards in the passing category is going to have to go up dramatically for USC to get back in this ball game in a hurry. They have a full second half to do it, but they really need some positives to occur right away. They defer the opening kickoff they're going to receive now. In that first half, Russell White, 11 carries, 175 yards and three touchdowns. That's a whole season for some people. Here's a kickoff now. Travis Hanna will take it for the Trojans. Comes up to the 10. Far side 15. This guy can really run. Look at him go across the 30. And he really kicked in the overdrive on the far side. Boy, can he move. Ryan Watkins eventually over there to knock him out. 29-yard return. And so that's where USC will start it. There's the numbers for USC. Two interceptions by Perry. Strother had that 92-yard touchdown run. Morton and Jackson, the leading receivers. I'll tell you one thing is really going to have to happen for USC to get back in this ball game. Perry's only thrown one touchdown pass in the whole season. He's got to put some numbers up right away in this game. Or do they make a change? That's the question. At the 30-yard line, he'll try to get something going. First down, ready to throw over the middle, and it's broken up. That was Yanni Jackson, the tight end, couldn't hang on. Barsala made sure of that. That was a catchable football. It's very catchable. As I said earlier in the first half, receivers have to come through. They have to hold on to the ball. They've got to come up with some big plays. Well, here's a guy who is making better decisions, who has grown as a quarterback, even though he's thrown only one touchdown pass. He looked very good in the second half against Notre Dame, second half against Stanford. Maybe he can have a good second half here. Second down, 10 from the 30. On the option is Perry. 
He's going to keep it and get nowhere. Barsala, who's just absolutely everywhere. Start thinking about MVPs. You got to think about this guy, number 13. You're campaigning again, early again. <laughs> you know, I was asking, can't bear the defensive coordinator for California. Why Barsala has number 13? Because, you know, it's a very unusual number. Some people think it's a superstitious number. He says, I'm afraid to ask. <laughs> can't bear is a man who's got the superstitions. He says, I'm afraid to ask. I'm afraid, what do you tell me? I mean, Marsala is that kind of a character. Speaking of Ken, he said that he would rather, says Reggie Perry scares him when he runs a football. If he had his wishes, he'd just rather see him throw the football. He's going to have his wish here in the second half. Yep, on the third and 11 rolling out, and the connection is made, and that'll be a first down catch by Johnny Morton out to the 45. So there's a beginning point, 15-yard gain. Eric Zumwalt over there along with Jody Graham. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Game from each team and for the 21st year to the Chevrolet Scholarship Program. $1,000 will be donated to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. Speaking of MVPs. Speaking of MVPs. I may be hard-pressed at this point not to give it to White. Well, okay. We may uh, have to think about this one. A lot of football left from the 45. Perry is gobbled up. He almost didn't get the ball away from Wes Bender, his fullback. They almost didn't get that exchange made. Perry then dropped by Travis and Barsala. <laughs> Wes Bender said, give me the ball. He stuck it here, I'm gonna keep it. You know, when you get a true option, the quarterback's gotta read, put the ball in there. And if the read's not there for the fullback to get it, he's gotta pull it all the way out. Sometimes you have that happen. You saw that Washington score. I tell you, I watched Washington play Cal. What a great game that was. Washington is just incredible. They're going to be my number one team at this moment. Second down, 10. Back to throw. Perry's Perry. Cornell Collier, and that's the third sack of the game for Cal. And Reggie Perry had no chance. Absolutely no chance. A loss of nine yards. Cal defense went to man-to-man -to -man coverage, covering your two wide receivers down the field. They brought everybody from the barn. And here comes Collier, number 36, on the outside. They intended to come in this ball game and move the pocket around, move the point of passes around, roll out passes, sprint passes, start the option, drop back and throw, and regular drop back passes. But in this situation, I think the Cal defense has to say to themselves, you're going to throw the football, we might as well start applying the pressure. We may have to move the pocket under the bench somewhere. <laughs> Third down and 19. Here is Perry again on target. Travis Hanna stepped out of bounds. Or he might have picked up a lot more yardage. Gain of five out to the 41-yard line. Just stepped out when he made the catch. So it's fourth down. Hannah, outstanding sprinter of USC. Space of the 400 meters when he finished second in the Pac-10. Out of Inglewood. And now Dale to punt. And Treggs will go back for Cal to the 20. Third punt of the game for this guy. California has not had the punt today. Line drive, end over end. Triggs bobbled it, and Holliquist got it. Lamont Holliquist got it, and there's a major break for the Trojans. Boy, he was quickly on top of that one, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. It's, this punt goes end over end. Usually when you punt the football and it gets down that fast, you don't get coverage. But Holliquist gets down there, and you watch Triggs. He's looking at it, hits him right the chest, goes right. He didn't bring his hands in together. And the ball bounces right up to Hollenquist. That was a tough one because it was such a strange-looking kick, wasn't it, Lynn? Sometimes those are hard to catch. Uh, you can't plan them any better. Hollenquist, who has done such a good job in their nickel defense, former safety, now playing linebacker, gives the Trojans now a chance to maybe climb back into this one. Hand off, coming to Struther. Struther able to negotiate the 22-yard line. Chris Cannon over there to make the stop. I'm impressed with uh, Struther. His balance, his vision, his toughness. He has 120 yards rushing now on eight carries. Here's what USC has uh, had as far as where they've started the drives. They've had one really good field position, the 45-yard line. The rest, they really have to march the entire field. It's their best field position to start a drive all afternoon long after you come off of those graphics. And we're going to have a flag stopping everything. Well, Selly, 71, is not having a great day on that line. I mean, he comes in a very her heralded offensive lineman out of Colorado. He has been very consistent, playing great football for this team. But today, he's already been flagged twice for moving before the snap of the ball. Last year, USC had a number one pick, Pat Harlow, now playing with the Patriots. 
Dead ball, false start, offense. Seven, Still second down. Seven penalty against USC and four of them the procedure calls. And you mentioned Boselli having a lot of trouble. Now when you have a turnover deep in the opponent's territory, even though you're way behind and you feel the pressure to throw the football, here's where you can take advantage of a running game that has been working well. But then when you're backed up by a penalty that pulls you out of that game plan, suddenly you find yourself having to put it back in the air. So the penalty now makes the second down seven yards to go. Perry giving off to Strother, and Strother weaves his way to the 22-yard line. He'll be short of the first down. It'll bring up third down. Next Saturday here, 12.30 Pacific, 1.30 Mountain, ABC's College Football brings you another key Pac-10 matchup. You'll see this explosive Washington team. Billy Joe Hobart, the quarterback, against the Trojans of USC as USC gets a dubious distinction of playing their third straight team ranked in the top ten. Oh, it's, a, it's a tough little alley they find themselves in. Quick pitch near side, Strutter. Strutter knocked out of bounds at the 19-yard line. Is that uh, going to be close? I think it will be a first down. Well, he saw the marker there. He knew he was going to have to go out of bounds, so he dove for it, and he extended the ball out in front of him. There is a penalty flag way over on the 12-yard line area. Here he is right here. Now he's pinned. He knows he's going to have to go for it. Watch him dive right there, and he extends the ball. Now it looks like from that, he's got the first down. And a penalty flag now being sorted out. Good effort that time by Strether. Personal foul against Cal. That was way off on the other side. I've evidently happened in the secondary somewhere. So Bruce Snyder, whose team uh, stopped him and then fumbles the punt, finds himself now in a little bit of a precarious situation. They don't want to give USC any hope here early in the second half. No. It's funny, I was, when I was covering the USC Arizona State football game, Al Michaels was doing the game with me, and of course Al Michaels went to, US, uh, went to Arizona State. USC was behind Gary, and I was teasing him a little bit. You know, USC has his history of comebacks. <laughs> Fourth quarter, they almost came back and won the football game. They can put it together. I saw that tape. When you started the broadcast out in your USC Letterman's jacket, I thought that was a little impartial on your part. Well, I was only teasing. Gary. Oh, okay. Because, only right. because Al went to Arizona State. Okay, just checking. Could be offsetting penalties we have here, so forget that play. <laughs> We're not getting indication from the officials that it was anything at all. Three-yard gain on the play, got him the first down, so the offsetting penalty is a dead ball foul. So you go back to where the play ended, so the play by Strother gets him the first down. You got all that? Got it. At the 19-yard line, here's Strother again to the 15 and gets knocked out of bounds at the 13. He has been outstanding today. I really like this guy. Collier knocks him out of bounds. Strother just running tough. The sophomore out of Oakland, nearby Skyline High School. Well, I'm sure Larry Smith has thrown the gauntlet down to his team and challenged them to be a better football team. Go out there and lead and make something happen. Deion Struthers has certainly picked up that challenge. He's going after people. You see when people come after him, he's pulling a hand out there, a forearm, trying to fight for the extra yards. 135 yards. at best his career high of 122 he had against Washington State as he takes this one inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. And that would be, I think, another first down. It'll be first and goal. Jason Wilburn made the stop there. Look at this crowd. 70,000. Homecoming, the 79th meeting. This is one of the finest settings in all of college football. And right now, the alums of Cal have enjoyed this game immensely. Boy, I tell you, Rich Brooks at Oregon's had a long year. He's had so many injuries. Losing again today to Stanford. First and goal. Bender, the fullback, maybe a yard, and that's about it. He's the transfer from Burbank High School in the Burroughs High School area. Then went to Glendale Community College. They feel like he can be explosive. He could take it all away if he could get some running room up the middle. A gain of uh, maybe a yard. It'll bring up second and goal there. Ryan Peary made the stop. Look at the arms on the uh, guy who's leading this uh, Trojan band. Yeah, he'll be on the line. <laughs> He looks like an offensive tackle, doesn't he? He's Dr. Bartner, director of the USC's band's bodyguard. <laughs> and off Strother, inside the five, dropped at the four. It'll be third and goal there. 
Zummel, Willard combined on the stop. Boy, USC really needs to get a touchdown out of this. Third and goal from the four. Reggie Perry has a play. Coming out of the ball game is Larry Wallace. Bob Crane, a tight end, 47, has checked in. Seven play drive, and they've stayed on the ground all the way. Third and goal, and movement, and I mean real movement. Firing up was Ryan Perry, the guy they called Giant, out of Morgan Hills, California. I don't know what he saw. When he saw something, he took a, he took a big shot at Reggie Perry on that play. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if the officials now are not trying to figure out, well, maybe somebody moved from Southern California, the right guard, but was it necessary for him to take this shot on Perry? There he is. Really played well this year. Hadn't played a lot prior to this year. They call off sides. Offside. Offside. Against, against USC, it'd be half the distance. Let's see if we can pick it up here. Look at the play. Look at the right guard. No, the right, the right guard moved on the play after Perry had already come into the neutral zone and across. It was Joel Chrisman, the guard you're talking about. The sophomore out of Grundy Center, Iowa. And a lot of guys from Iowa play at USC. Third and goal now at about the two. On the option, Perry, he's going to get it in for the touchdown. And so, after the fumble on the punt, USC able to take it in. Eight play drive, and now another penalty play. Well, he decides to run the option. He's been very good at running this option all year long. Takes it down the line. He doesn't have to go very far. Cal's defense is there. It's not a big gainer, but at one yard, he's in the end zone. Foul on the offense. Oh, personal the foul. Touchdown the touchdown good. will stand. The personal foul after the play was over. So the touchdown will stay. Reggie Perry able to take it in. And they'll assess that penalty on the kickoff, which means gives Cal an excellent opportunity for great field position. That's the fourth rushing touchdown of the year for Reggie Perry. But you got to give USC credit. They are able to capitalize on that turnover, despite all kinds of penalty flags, seemingly all the way into the end zone area. And they're still sorting it out. As uh, coming in to attempt the point after be Cole Ford. Uh, on the offense, will be penalized on the kickoff. This will be the third time we've had a kickoff today after a major penalty. Changing the field position a little bit, huh? It certainly does. I mean, what USC needs after this touchdown they should really try and pin Cal down and get better field position. Cole Ford adds a point after, and so USC strikes first here in the second half. Nine minutes left in the third quarter. California 35, USC 14. Tight Wad Hill. And what a setting and what a view they must have from up there. As California having... 35-14 lead at the nine-minute mark of the third quarter. Now they assess this major penalty. And at the 20-yard line is where Cal will be kicking off. Ford kicking off. Russell White takes it at the nine. Pretty good kick under the circumstances. Up to the 25, to the 30. Kind of glides, breaks a tackle, stays on his feet at the 40. You just got to really wrap him up because if you don't, you're not going to get him down. That'll be a 33-yard kickoff return. Jason Oliver eventually made the stop. You're going to wrap him up and down 9-1-1. <laughs> and then hope their help gets there in time, right? That's it. Russell White started this game out spectacular fashion and continues to just be scintillating. Look at the penalties. You know, the record in a game is 16, and when we were here for the Oregon game, they were two penalties short of that record. So Cal's had some problems by the penalty, as here's Lindsey Chapman to the 45. Pearl made the stop, gain of four. Boy, I tell you, Washington having uh, quite a day up in Seattle. Washington meeting USC next week. You'll see it on ABC. And Washington will always finish up with that big intrastate battle with Washington State, but it will be played in Husky Stadium. 
Second down, six yards to go from the 45. This is Chapman again. He's got a lot of running room. 35, 30, breaks a beautiful tackle into the 15. Boy, he is certainly not chopped liver. You talk about Russell White, what about this guy? 41 yards by Chapman. Webb and Pace eventually caught up with him. And Chapman has 85 yards rushing today on 11 carries. This is a terrific run. I mean, because he gets some blocking up front to initially spring him. Not a great deal. He squeezes through a hole. He goes through just about everybody. Number 24, Mike Salmon has a shot. He misses there. Number four, Jason Oliver. He misses. He cuts back. Number nine, Salmon just, excuse me, Stefan Pace is a man who just brings him down with some help from Webb. Are you ready for this? Right now, California's rushed for 318 yards. That's 10.1 a carry on 31 totes. And <laughs> unbelievable. From the 15-yard line after that run by Chapman, here's White now, and the flag on the play is White will go for four. And another flag coming out. So you go to Chapman, then you go to White. It's just double trouble for any defense. That penalty, I think, is on Cal. Gee and McGinnis were over there to make the stop for USC. Well, Cal having a great day today. We ask Russell White if he's surprised by the success the Bears have had. Not really. I feel we put a lot of hard work into it. You know what I mean? It's something that I feel we deserve because we did work so hard coming off a year like last year and going into summer camp and then coming over here to Berkeley camp. and We put a lot of hard work into it, so I, I feel we deserve it. You know, Glenn, you wonder what kind of numbers he'd have. He hadn't had that walking pneumonia. Oh, absolutely. Something else I have to kind of speculate on. He's a junior. He's having a great year. A lot of juniors have decided to forego their senior year and decided to put themselves in the draft. Another good reason Lindsey Chapman, I think, is getting a lot of playing time in case White decides to make that decision. Here's Zummel, and uh, he is a very powerful back as he takes it to the 10-yard line. Merle and Gee, and another penalty flag has come down. Well, White, with 175 yards, 11 carries, he's still two yards short of his career best that he had last year. Personal foul, face mask against USC. So let's pause now for our stations to identify themselves here on this ABC network. This is KATU Channel 2, Portland. 35-14, 7.37 to go, third quarter. Gary Bender along with Lynn Swan, the California Golden Bears. Continuing to move the football, now by penalty, have it at the five-yard line with... An arsenal that is certainly second to very few teams. Maybe Washington, Florida State. I mean, you're talking about three or four teams in the country have this many weapons. They're unbelievable what they can do to you. Some walk white in the backfield. Sean Dawkins goes in motion. Pulaski rolling the near side. Drakes is well covered. The back of the end zone. Sean Dawkins, touchdown, California. He just waited in the back. He came across, Gary, with his height. He kind of got back there. He had people all around him. But Pulaski rolled and rolled. He had Salmon, number 24, Henry, 26, right there. And Pulaski just rolled, rolled. He looked to see where he was. He was looking at that big target all the way. He says, OK, I think I can give him a shot right here. Nice pass. He lofts it up. It's high. Bingo. The back of the end zone. Touchdown. At 6-4, he is an imposing target. Pulaski's second touchdown pass of the day, 16 for the year, a 59-yard drive, four plays. Dawkins with his second touchdown grab of the afternoon. Hey, Frank, we're on a menu. Coming right up. You are about to witness a revolution in business communications. At just one touch of a button, you can add photographs to anything, from memos to menus. Anyone can do it. Any business can afford it. Introducing the Apple One-Step Scanning System. Hey, this is nice. Thank you. It's a better way to make yourself understood. 
as we became employee-owned, I think there's a far greater commitment to providing good quality service. Roving Rapid Return is really fast. I meet you at your car, push a couple of buttons, hand you a receipt, and you're out of there. So why rent from anyone but an owner? When you're all stuffed up and use an ordinary nasal spray, it drips into your tissue where it can't help you breathe. But not Sinex Ultrafine Mist. Its medicine stays where you need it, so you can breathe the way you want to. We don't drip down, we clear up. Getting to know you. I drove literally every car in the same class, and uh, it boiled down to, I wanted a Geostorm. Guys like a girl that knows how to drive a stick. There's 140 horses in here. Can you Hello? Horses. The cockpit's laid out like a jet. You don't have to be a race car driver to drive a storm, but you sure feel like one. Get to know the new 140 horsepower Geo Storm GSI. Right around the corner at your Chevrolet Geo dealers. Getting to know you. If this car had wings, it would fly. Cal has now bumped it up 42-14. Pulaski, his second touchdown toss of the day. He has 146 yards passing. 10 of 19 is Bryant, who's two for three in the field goal department, will be kicking off. We try to stack him up, not let him know where Conway's going to go before the kickoff. And Bryant, who hits him so deep, doesn't worry about who stacks where. He just kicks it out of the back, and Conway won't bring it out. And guess what? Another penalty flag. You get to the point you look for those yellow hankies after every play. From where it's thrown, it's got to be offsides. On Seven. Cal, on the kickoff. 7-17 to go. A legal procedure against Cal. Well, we talked about Brian Triggs. He already has the record here at California for most catches. He's trying to break Wesley Walker's yardage record and here is walker in action steve bartkowski throwing wesley walker wearing number 99 taking it in for the touchdown and he was inducted into the california hall of fame today and wesley this is a big day for you you must have been very pleased i'm very pleased i'm proud to be here i'm very proud of my school uh one of the biggest reasons i chose the university of california overall was a chance not only to play football but get a great education and i did both and i'm just proud to be an inductee to the hall of fame i it was i did have the opportunity to speak on behalf of all the inductees and i couldn't pick a better time to be here on a special night especially a nice day wesley have you been here to see the bears play this year before today no i haven't uh i'm in New York now. I have a lot of business interest. Uh, I have a place out in Napa Valley, though. We get out here maybe twice a year. I'm here with my family, so uh, uh, during my travels and the business that I'm involved with now, I'll be out here a lot more. Well, I tell you, you got to be impressed with California. Well, I'll tell you what, it's not the Cal that I used to know and not the SC that I used to know, but certainly Bruce Snyder's put a, together a good program. I think they have a bright future. Uh, they've been definitely impressive, and I'm just glad to be a part of this situation today. And I'm hoping for Ryan Trex to actually break my record today because he's a Carson High man. I know he wanted to do that, and thank you very much, Wesley. Thank you, and I just want to say hello to my mother and brother and sister if they're watching. All right. Thank you. Okay, that guy could play, couldn't he, Lynn? Yes, he could. I tried to recruit him uh, to USC, and uh, was I was not successful. One, one of the few guys that got away from me. Oh, and, uh, come on now. <laughs> you were recruiting? Now, how can you recruit? You're not well, a coach. When I was at USC, oh, okay. we were recruiting Wesley Walker. And, All right. Uh, but he, he decided to come up to Cal, and he, he's done very well. He sent Brian Treggs a letter. Uh, said he was going to come up and say hello to him, and, and he was one of the heroes for Brian Treggs. By the way, the 42 points scored by Cal is the best point total they've had here in Memorial Stadium as the pass comes out complete to Morton. They were 38-7 in 1921 here. So they have uh, broken another standard. This is a record-breaking year for California. 38-7 in 1921. Boy, that goes back a long ways. It shows you the dominance USC has had in the series. That's true. Now, they beat UCLA earlier in the year. I would ask you, Gary, when was the last time they beat both USC and UCLA? But you I already know. know. 1958, right? That's correct. Let's see. Uh, were you born then? Here's yeah. a pass up the field, and Hannah makes the Whoa. catch. And they uh, he almost took out the entire soft drink line on this side. Well, that's a pretty good leap in itself. He could be a hurdler. Now watch this. I mean, you talk about having a little finesse, having the ability to adjust and make moves about soft hands. 
How about these soft feet as they go over the soft drinks? You know, this guy runs the 400 meters, maybe ought to run the hurdles. <laughs> and get some lessons from Edwin Moses. That's right. Second down 10 as the ball was out of bounds when he caught it. 7.03 left in the game, 42-14 Cal. Perry throwing near side to Conway, and he's immediately wrapped up by David Wilson. They're about a, well, they're still uh, about a half about yard. A yard on that. Is that what they got? They'll, they'll give him a yard. <laughs> it was only about a half yard. I meant to ask you about that game in 1958, Gary. Where were you sitting? Where was I sitting? Yeah. I don't remember that one. Uh, <laughs> 1958. I was born then, though, Lynn. I know you probably uh, doubted that. I look so young, but I was around. By the way, <laughs> did our producer say he wasn't born then? Oh, uh, he thinks All that. these young kids in TV. Well, he looks older, though, doesn't he? Working with us must do that to him. Third down and nine now. Barry Lotta Heat gets hit very hard, and Joel Scott can't catch the ball. Barsala unloaded on Perry, and Perry very slow getting up. Whew. Number 13 really pile drives right into Reggie Perry. When you got that kind of speed coming from the outside and then you delay on the blitz, it's real hard to pick up. Everybody's already left the backfield with their keys. Then Barcella comes. Perry throws it, but he pays a price. Pays the price, I guess. And doesn't now, get anything for it in return because it's not a complete pass. So Treggs will go back and try to field this punt after the first one a moment of while ago got away from him. Dale punts a beauty. Treggs is going to call for the fair catch and makes it at the 21-yard line. Cal will have it with 6 11 to go in the third. The Golden Bears playing very well. Well, we've talked about big plays. Let's go back to this Cal-USC series, 1949. And Frank Brunk will return this kickoff 102 yards for a touchdown as they are on their way to a perfect season and to the Rose Bowl as they would meet Ohio State. Now watch this play because there is a certain person who did not make a touchdown saving tackle. And that man right there is Frank Gifford. And by the way, that's as fast as they ran in those days. We haven't slowed this down. That's real time. Gifford may hear about that. <laughs> so the touchdown by Brunk and Cal had a big day there as they are today. Straight ahead goes Russell White for a couple of yards. And if that is two yards, that would tie his career high of 177 yards that he got last year against Stanford. Five minutes, 50 seconds left in this one. 42-14, California. They came out in the first quarter with 263 yards. Took a 22-7 lead, never been headed since. That is 177 yards for Russell White now, tying his career best. Back to throw, Pulaski, off of Zumwalt. Greg Zumwalt coming into this game. Pretty good receiver. He's caught 15 passes. Oh, yeah. He catches a little bit more than White coming out of the backfield there. Boy, I tell you, this USC team, we talked about how young they are and uh, how hard they played last week against Notre Dame. Started out the year disastrously, losing to Memphis State. Beat Penn State. Looked like they might really be on their way to a pretty good year. Yeah, and then they came back against Arizona State, played a very lackluster football game. Pull things together in the fourth quarter, but still came up short. Pulaski back again. Got protection. Throwing. Catch made by Mike Caldwell. Caldwell across the 35 to the 37, a first down. 14-yard gain. Caldwell is a starting slot back. Depending on what formation they decide to come out in, he would line up in that slot. And sometimes he gets a little more action in the ball game. But here's a kid has got a great deal of talent. But because Dawkins and Treggs have been playing so well, he really hasn't had many opportunities to show his talent. Not only that, they're going to play some at tight end today because Woodall was out of there. Pitch near side, White. White is going to get to the 38 and knock down there. Matt Gee still playing awfully hard. Boy, he filled very well. Number 48, David Webb was over there. And so a gain of very little on that play. Boy, Florida is moving closer and closer to that SEC championship. North Carolina State after losing last week to Clemson. Beating up on the Gamecocks. At the 38 now, a gain of a yard, second and nine. Cal, five touchdowns, 
Two field goals, one missed field goal. They haven't punted all day long. That's what they've done with their possessions. Russell White again trying to get some yardage. And all of a sudden, USC is really stuffing it. That's Holenquist who's playing now in place of the injured Kurt Barber. Well, White just lost a couple of yards, so maybe this is not... <laughs> his record is he's going in reverse here. Defensive line for USC makes a terrific stop here. They get in tight. That's Lamont Holenquist, number 17, making the initial stop. So he's back to 177 yards now. Third down, 10. Trips formation, top of the field. Pulaski looking that way. Drills it to Triggs. He's to the 45, and he has a first down. Hollenquist over there to make the stop. 19-yard gain, and there he is. He's not very big, but he's got a big heart. 5'10", 170-pounder from Carson. He is a good friend, by the way, and a high school teammate of Calvin Holmes, who was in on that play, but did not start a cornerback. Four for 69 for Trey. So he probably will not. I shouldn't say that. He Didn't might get Wesley Walker's record before the day's over. I mean, he's got 69 yards. The way Cal's playing today, they just might decide, okay, we've got a big lead now. Let's try and give him that record. Let's get it out of the way. Chapman that time running wide. Key and pace over to make the stop for USC. Three and a half minutes left in the third. 87 yards for Lindsey Chapman. Chapman had a 68-yard run against Washington in that losing cause. He's had two 100-yard days himself. Damon Simeon has now checked in. Number two, split to the near side. 42-14 Cal. Zumwalt off left tackle. Spins his way to the 35. You know, he's got some explosion from that fullback spot. I, I just think some of those moves of Chapman and White are starting to rub off on them. You know, normally here's a guy who runs straight ahead and picks up the tough yardage. Now he's coming out, he's dancing a little bit, tries a little sidestep move there. Well, he does everything very well for this football team. Very quiet, doesn't say a lot. His younger brother, Eric, is a little more outspoken. Very close, the two brothers, and what a pair they are for California. Third down in the yard. Thus far, Cal is six of eight on third down conversions. Holly goes in motion. White trying to get the first down. And I don't know. Salmon filling very well from that free safety spot. It's going to be very close. There's Salmon. Salmon has played so well for this team. The sophomore, last year he had four interceptions as a freshman. Two this year. Made a great interception against Notre Dame last week. One of the best plays I've seen. Let's see if he got this first down. Number five, Marty Holly is man. Picks a lead block. White tries to go to the outside. He's right there at the 45-yard line. Just looked like he tried to lean his body over it. He didn't get it either. No. You know, I'll say something for USC right now. They're playing pretty tough right now. Well, Larry Smith said, every game we've been in, no matter how bad it's been in the first half or after three quarters, this team has never given up. They keep coming after you. It's interesting if you look at them as a second-half ball club. They've outscored teams very effectively in the second half, and 97 to 48 is how they've outscored them in the second half thus far in the last six games. 73 points in the fourth quarter. Fourth down, they're going to go for it. Fourth down and less than a yard. And here's Pulaski sneaking it forward. He buried, but I think he got enough. I think there was enough of a surge ahead of him. Looking at the officials, with a mark in the ball, it's going to be a first down. So on fourth down, Pulaski converts. And this homecoming crowd of 70,000 on a gorgeous day here in the Bay Area, enjoying this team, the Cal Bears, who came in here ranked 10th. They've been ranked as high as 7th. That was the week they played Washington and lost. Pulaski again, going up top to Dawkins. Dawkins is in, touchdown over Gerald Henry. I tell you, Henry at 5'8", he just can't stay up with him. Well, Henry at 5'8", Gary, means that you're going to give Sean Dawkins the opportunity when there's perfect coverage to go up for the football. As we take a look at Dawkins here, he's well covered, but right here, Henry's footing goes bad. He goes down, Hawkins stays, Dawkins stays with the ball, 
and it's a touchdown. Boy, it's just a big difference in height, and he was just able to wait a little bit and come up with it. And he has three touchdown catches today as Brian's point after makes it 49 to 14. So let's take now this opportunity for this message from the University of Southern California. Gary Bender and Lynn Swan, we've been documenting all afternoon long what a record-setting year this is. We mentioned Dawkins with three touchdown catches. Those three, of course, coming from Pulaski. And Pulaski now with 17 touchdown tosses, one off the school record. He needed four to surpass Troy Taylor. By the way, Lynn, that's the first time Dawkins has caught three touchdown passes in a game. Well, I'll tell you one thing. There aren't a lot of receivers who ever catch three touchdown passes in the game, college or professional. That's 14 on his career. So he has nine for this year, five last year, and he's just a sophomore. He reminds me a lot of John Stallworth. That's a real compliment. So they're going to bring this out to the 20. Let's look at other scores in the top 20. Catch you up to date as to what's going on. Florida State later against Louisville. Miami is idle. Arizona State coming back a little bit in the fourth quarter. Look at Michigan. Desmond Howard, you see the big day he had. And Michigan trying to get to that Rose Bowl game to play what right now would be the Huskies of Washington. I don't know. You talk about good football teams. They don't get a lot better than this California team. Barry continues at quarterback. Well, they're complete, Gary. I mean, they're possessing the football on offense. They're eating up the clock. They're coming up with big plays, and they're playing hard, aggressive defense. Barry going deep. Morton's way behind him. He made a remarkable catch. Oh, what a catch that was. At the 42, 38-yard diving grab by Johnny Morton. Shades of UCLA 1990. Here's a young man who came up with two game-saving and winning touchdown catches against UCLA. Right here, just, he runs a down and out and up. Now watch him really lay out for this ball. Looks like it's gonna go over his head, really gets out, he's got it in his hands, pulls it in, good catch. Wow. Almost looks like he laid it on the ground. Boy, he turned Chris Cannon inside out on that play. Here's Perry on the option. Nice fake up the middle to Bender, and then coming to the near side, and David Wilson knocks him out of bounds. Oh, that was pretty. Johnny Morton, you mentioned those two touchdown catches against UCLA last year as a freshman. The one that won it in that shootout with the Bruins a year ago. So the line of scrimmage, the 32-yard line, a gain of nine on that scramble by Perry on the option. Second and a yard to go from the 32 of Cal. And I would have to agree with Larry Smith about the improvement of Perry at this point. He's come out and he's been under a lot of pressure, but he keeps putting the ball in the air, keeps going after it. Larry Wallace goes to the top of the field. He's split out. Hand off to Struther. Looks like he might want to throw it. He's taken off instead to the 30-yard line. And uh, don't you think he had the option to throw there? He had Wallace deep down the field and Barsala over there. He never did cock to throw, but I think he had the option of throwing the football and eventually is knocked down at the 28-yard line. Well, there are a couple of people back there in good coverage. One of them was number 38, Wolf Barber. You know, and uh, so when he, when Dion rolled out, he wisely decided to keep the football, picks up a game. And he picks up a first down at the 28-yard line. USC trailing 49-14, a minute 17 left in the third quarter. Perry again with a deep drop over the middle. Banta, the big tight end, and he is a big one. It's 6-6 out of Baton Rouge, and then he takes some punishment. Just short of the first down, it appears, inside the 20. Bradford Banta, 6-6, the Louisiana High School Player of the Year his senior year. It's only his fifth catch of the year. Outstanding blocker, however. Going to bring up uh, second down and uh, maybe a half yard to go. 43 seconds left in the quarter. Perry moving the team very well on the option. Follows his back through the hole. Gets to the 15-yard line. Got the first down. So they'll stop the clock to move the sticks with 33 seconds. Yeah, that's the second time we've seen a real rough exchange from the fullback and Perry on that option. It's got to be a little bit smoother to allow Reggie to take advantage of the play and get to the outside. Well, the numbers are in the right column for Pulaski, three touchdowns, and the wrong column for Perry, two interceptions. 
mean, both of them complete 13 passes. He attempted 23. All that's even except for that <laughs> those last two. And that is a big difference. Perry back to throw on a first down. Over the middle, broken up, deflected up the field, incomplete. Is that Paul Joyner, number 47? That's who it was. Joyner had not seen a lot of action this year for California. The intended receiver was this guy, Johnny Morton. Take a look at Morton. She leaves the line of scrimmage. She's looking forward, coming across the middle. Good coverage underneath. Good coverage by Wolf over the top. I don't know if that was Joyner or not. I no. think somebody else had a hand on the ball. Anyway, second down 10 for the 15. Struther trying to use a block by Bender makes it just about to the 10, and then he is tackled. Big hit there by David Wilson. See, that time Struthers hesitated, Gary. Did you see that? Yep. He, he, he was coming to the outside. He's looking for a place to run, and he didn't find it there. And Wilson didn't in any way hesitate. 49-14 Cal will return with more action between USC and California after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Deion Struther hitting off the left-hand side as we start the fourth quarter. California, the 49-14 lead. The line of scrimmage now about the five. Jason Wilburn and Barsala make the stop. Hey, Glenn, I want to take just a moment to say hello to a very special lady in Calistoga, Alice Vermeil. She's been a little bit under the weather, Dick Vermeil's mother. I had the opportunity, my wife and myself, to have some of her great home cooking. I want to wish her the very best, and Alice Vermeil, get well soon, will you? Back to throw now is Perry on a fourth down, trying to complete it on the far side to Cornell Collier. He can't come up with it as Collier was there, and USC's drive comes to a grinding halt. And Collier, who's made so many big plays in the backfield this year, there again, Barsala a little shaken up on the play. And so on fourth down, California takes over at the 10-yard line. USC just tried that little half roll to set up a throwback to the short side of the field. But Cornell Collier, number 36, just came, came up, and his idea was to shorten it even more. So from the 10-yard line, 14-20 left to go. Hand off to White, trying to wedge it out for a couple of yards. Well, I tell you, you're USC, and you think... What's ahead, you've got third-ranked Washington next, and I'm looking down on the near sideline, and Rob Johnson is warming up, the true freshman. And you wonder where you go from here. You play Notre Dame and South Bend, you play Cal here, you get back to the Coliseum, but you gotta face the Huskies. That's right, now, you know, this is, it looks pretty bad for USC. They haven't lost three games in a row, actually four games in a row since 1975. Uh, when they lost to California, Stanford, Washington, and UCLA, but they still went to a bowl. Here's a handoff to Russell White. White out to the 15. A lot of people feel that USC would have to win three of their last four to get to a bowl. Jeff Kopp made the stop. Okay, there's Washington. Then they go to Tucson. And then, of course, that battle against UCLA, which will be a home game at the Coliseum. USC... Maybe going to experience. There's Rob Johnson. I think he's going to come in when they get the ball. Well, that's that's an interesting move. I mean, Rob Johnson comes into this ball game. It seems seemingly he's out of hand, 49 to 14. You know, D, are you saying to yourself right now, let's start getting ready for 1992? Well, you're going to give up a year, a redshirt year anyway. Back to throw is Pulaski. They're going to stop it. He was gunning deep for Treggs on the near side. Willie. Matt Willig was the guy that pounded in there that time on Pulaski. I, mean, I just believe, Gary, if, if you're going to bring a young man into a ball game, it's a tough situation to bring him into this particular game under these circumstances. Dead ball, delay a game, offense. I would Still just, down. I would prefer to wait until the next week, let him have the preparation of an entire week if you want him to start getting experience, and then let him play. Well, the Rose Bowl picture, Michigan, step closer. Ohio State, boy, that's going to be a big win for Iowa. Ohio State needed that one. Indiana over Minnesota. Look at Northwestern, two in a row. 
Of course, Penn State moving into the Big Ten picture a year from now, so we'll list them underneath all of that heading as Russell White now wedges it out close to the 20-yard line. Salmon making the stop for the Trojans of USC. To get back to your point about Rob Johnson, the freshman, true freshman, we should add, yet I guess the point you have to make is how much can Reggie Perry continue to learn with not having success? I mean, there's a point in your life where you need to have some success. Maybe you can take a breather on the side, look at things with a different perspective, and come out and play better when you get another opportunity. Yes, but then do you, do you weigh the individual above what's good for the team in the long picture in terms of losing a full year? Chris Noonan, his first punt of the game. Not exceptionally good one off the side of his foot, but it's going to take a cow bounce. Conway's going to let it roll, and it'll go inside the 30 to the 27-yard line. So Chris Noonan, who was fourth in the Pac-10 of punting, ends up with a 55-yard punt. California with a 49 to 14 lead. Number 11, Rob Johnson out of Mission Viejo, El Toro High School. 6'4", 195. You see what he did in high school from the shotgun, his first pass in college, and he makes a completion. That'll be a memorable start for him. Yanni Jackson, the tight end, a five-yard pickup. And he might remember the hit more than he'll remember the completion. Now here is his welcome to big-time college football. He sets, he throws, and he suffers. Ooh. Mahanatu, who's been really a thorn in their side. as He started the game out putting some pressure on. Johnson again from the shotgun. They'll try to protect him, scrambling out of the pocket. Stays on his feet somehow. Throws up the field and behind Morton. And he was lucky to avoid a long loss on that play. Ryan Perry was over there. Well, with time permitting here today, we're going to bring you the thrifty rental car, car rental, I should say, post-game report. We'll keep you posted on what's happened throughout the country. As Bruce Snyder... With a 49-14 lead, 11.08 left in this game. And Rob Johnson, his first playing time in the collegiate ranks, the true freshman, back to throw again. And he's going to be sacked. That's four sacks today. Mac Travis got him. I can't say enough about Mac Travis. He's the anchor of that defensive line. They say that his goal every game is to outplay the best opposing defensive lineman. When they played Washington, he wanted to play better than Steve Entman. That's the kind of goals he sets for himself. Uh, he sets some pretty high goals. He does a good job. So Rob Johnson gets a completion. He gets an incomplete and a throwaway and a sack all in his first series. Well, he got some of those butterflies out there anyway, didn't he? Yes, he did. But, you know, again, it, I guess that's why the coach is down him to make decisions. Low line drive kick by Dale Triggs is going to be tackled to the open field by Brian Williams. We Not a very good punt. 32 yards, five-yard return. Cal has it. Third round coverage of the Tour Championship. Then tomorrow at 2 Pacific, 1 Mountain, we'll continue coverage of the PGA's richest event. Final round actions. They go down the stretch. Followed then by a Jack Nicholas golf special presented by Nationwide Insurance. The Golden Bear. You know the most points ever scored against USC was by Notre Dame. 51 in 1966. And Cal has a chance to better that. Pulaski back, intended for Russell White. John McKay sent his scout back to look at Notre Dame that year to scout the team. And that was the only time his scout came back and said, Coach, you really don't want to play these guys. Went back there, and they just took them apart. And John McKay said after that, well, I don't care if they're better than us. I don't want to lose again to this team. It was quite a while before he lost another game in Notre Dame. But his scouts were right anyway. Yeah, on that one. Got to have honest information and get ready. Second down, 10 for the Bears. Pulaski giving off to White. Here he comes. 45 and tackled at the 40-yard line. And that will be enough for the first down. Arvin Pollard, the senior out of Carson, Banning High School over to make the stop. And now he's got over 200 yards on the day. For Russell White, 19 carries, 203 yards. And he looks like he's carried to 203 yards. He's well, tired. He's doing his best Jim Brown right there. You get up slow, you drag yourself back to the huddle. You know, you look real tired. Talk to the guys in there. They say a couple of words to you. Then he calls a play, you line up, you get back out there, they hand you the ball. 
and somehow you have enough energy to run for a touchdown if it's necessary. This is the sixth best day ever rushing for a California Golden Bear. You know what the record is? 283 yards set in 1954 by Jerry Drew. And off to White, but he may get it on this run. He is inside the 25 and knocked down at the 21-yard line. That almost went for six. I told you. <laughs> the Jim Brown move. 19-yard <laughs> gain, now 222 yards on the day. With all the respiratory problems that Russell White was having, there is one benefit. That his legs were not worn out. He's well rested. Now, maybe he needs to come in and out because his conditioning isn't where he wants it to be. But those legs are fresh and strong. Boy, he has broken so many tackles today. Hand off to Chapman. He has come for no gain on that play. You know, there was a stat that I had earlier that every time that Russell White has carried the ball 20 times, they've been unbeaten, 6-0. and So now they're 7-0 because that was his 20th carry. Well, 44-16, the Huskies continue on their unbeaten ways. Washington State and UCLA, both those teams going in with three-game winning streaks. Stanford, who will meet Cal in the last game of the regular season, beating Oregon. White is averaging, by the way, 11.1 a carry. Oh, it's dropped down from that 28, huh? Yeah, well, he's kind of sloughing it now. Second down, 10. Velosky up top, going far side, intended on the far side of the field for Damian Simeon, and good coverage that time. You know, Very good coverage by Pollard. Again, we, we were talking about records. Sometimes going for records can be dangerous. We talked to the offensive coordinator for Cal, Mariucci, and we asked him about whether or not he was going to have Pulaski go for the record of Trex. He says, you know, it's in the way in the back of my head. I don't think Trex is going to get the record today. I'm not going to force the situation to try and get Mike Pulaski the record. But now he's got three touchdown passes. He needs one more. I think he's going to give him the opportunity. I don't think he thought he'd be leaving for, leading 49 to 14. Here's White again, who came in on that play. And he picks up a couple of yards inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. I tell you what. Cal talked about how much they hated USC and they didn't like him, and they're taking out some of that right now on the Trojans. McGinnis made the stop. There's the stat I was talking about. Interesting that 20 would be the number, but that's what it's worked out to be, and he's carried 21 times today. And the way they've been shuttling White and Chapman in the ball game, it's hard for any one of them to get 20 carries. Fourth down. And so the field goal attempt by Brian. He's two of three today. This will be a 37-yard attempt. Velosky calls timeout. So they'll use their first timeout of the second half with 8.01 and left in the fourth. We'll be back. California trying to add to this 49-14 lead. Well, coming into this game, Cal now has been over 40 points on five different occasions. If they kick this field goal successfully, it'll be the most points ever scored against the University of Southern California. As we said, Notre Dame scored 51 and 66. With 49 on the board, they're trying to add three. 37-yard attempt. Brian's kick goes up, and the kick is good. And so another record has been set by California. 52-14, 7.55 to go in homecoming 1991. Team California and the Bears who are finishing a four-game homestand in spectacular fashion here. Okay, this California football team's at Oregon State. They play ASU here. They go to Stanford. They do not play Washington State this year. Cal looking at what they hope is a 10 and 1 regular season record in the New Year's Day Bowl, and they've made a statement today. This certainly encouraged the bowl people. Kick off to Travis Hanna coming up to the 10 yard line. 15 to the 20. This guy can really run to the 30 and tackle to the 32. Ricky Spears is an outstanding special teams performer. One of the guys, by the way, who was burned out of his uh, residence. Along with Scott Roseman, there were four California football players who were in that tragic Oakland Hills fire. We were driving through the area yesterday. Just devastating to look at it. Four, four football players, and there were 11 other students 
uh, who are participating in uh, sports here at Cal who are also affected by that fire burned out. And if you joined us late, the uh, University of California Athletic Department donating $100,000 to the relief fund. Back to throws, Rob Johnson, the true freshman, scrambling around. He's going to run and showing some pretty good quickness and speed. Goes out of bounds at the far side at the 40-yard line. That was a nice move in the open field that time. Not Ends a bad up being move. an eight-yard game. Yeah, not a bad move on his part. The book on him is that he is kind of slow. There's a flag down on the field at the moment. But he's kind of slow, doesn't have great feet. But uh, in addition to his ability as a football player, he's a pretty good baseball player, Gary, a pitcher. He was offered $100,000 to sign with the Twins, 16th round pick. But he said they'd have to pay him an awful lot more money before the football season began to get him to play baseball. Well, he's a coach's son, and they're always special. His dad was his high school coach. Penalties now with that one. California has had 14 penalties for 134 yards. There's the most ever scored against USC. Boy, I tell you, Bruce Snyder, to look back on this year and the superlatives, I mean, it's just one after another, record after record being shattered. Last year, he was a Pac-10 Coach of the Year. I think certainly the race for the Pac-10 Coach of the Year has to be between Bruce Snyder and Don James. There, were no, <laughs> there aren't any other coaches to give it to. Wallace comes in motion. Rob Johnson rolls his way and can't make the connection to Wallace. Stops the clock with 7.35 to go. Interesting, there were two receivers, wide receivers, downfield in the pattern. Everybody else was left in the block. The entire secondary of Cal only had to cover two guys. Second and 10 now. Line of scrimmage, the 45. Gaston Green in 86. Rushed for 224 yards. So Russell White has tied the most against USC. And uh, all kinds of confusion here. Flags flying everywhere. Tied the record that was set by Gaston Green at UCLA. Yep. 224 and yards in 1986. Boy, he's having a big year for the Denver Broncos, too. So this penalty will be sorted out. The legal procedure against U USC. Baselli might have been moving again. And we talked about this being a young team for USC and a lot of youthful players for Cal. And we also talked about the fact that Weitzer Jr., a lot of players might be looking to go into the NFL earlier this year. And I think all around the country, college teams and coaches are concerned about that. The NFL is negotiating with the, well, now defunct or players union about a wage scale, which will restrict the amount of money incoming players can make. A lot of these young players feel that they can come out early We'll have a chance to get in before they do that. And second and 15, Johnson going to be thrown down for a loss. Paul Joyner was there. And another penalty flag at the 50-yard line. Loss back to the 40, but let's see if it stays there. I feel like I'm doing the hokey pokey. <laughs> you gain a couple yards, there's a penalty flag, and you come back. Well, Larry Smith took USC to the Rose Bowl the first three years. Last year, they ended up a bowl in El Paso. And it's interesting how now he's just trying to avoid a losing season with a young football team that started only three seniors today. Personal foul against Cal. And it's a, it's a tough place to be. USC really hard on their coaches. They really expect you to win all the time. Everyone likes to win all the time. But Larry Smith has done a terrific job for this team. This just happens to be one of those years where things have worked against him. Well, Marinovich, leaving early, really changed things at quarterback. You wonder, they talked about it was addition through subtraction because of the problems he had had personally and not getting along with Larry Smith and the coaching staff. But you wonder, had he stayed around with his experience, what kind of year this team might have had? Of course, last year he had a secondary that, you know, he, he would have had a great secondary, but then Carrier decided to leave earlier. Holland, of course, was ineligible. Marvin Par Parlett and Deshaun Burns, all not there. There's uh, an interesting graphic, and they're going to lose three straight. And they could go easily four straight next week. Now, Moody is trying to get into an unbalanced line to the right, and they had a little problem there. 
Harris Johnson scrambling around. A lot of running room to the 30. 25 stiff arms. Michael Davis and his rammed out of bounds there. I like this guy's mobility. He runs very well. I knew Perry could. I thought Johnson was more of a pure passer, but he's ran very well. He's done a very good job of running with the ball as Wilburn over there on the far side. Along with Davis, they're going to set it up at the 22-yard line. I, I think the difference between the two is that Reggie Perry does run with the football. He is a good runner. What I'm seeing of Johnson here is he's scrambling more. I mean, he's coming out, he's running when he has to, not because he really wants to. This could be a confidence builder for this freshman. First down out to 22. Pitch comes to Estes Creighton. Creighton carrying for the first time to the 10, to the 5, and knocked out of bounds at the one-yard line. Estrus Creighton, a junior college transfer who didn't play last week because he fell off his bike and hurt his elbow, did a nice job running 21 yards to the one-yard line. They say he's a coast-to-coast -coast kind of player. He can run from end zone, from goal line to goal line, a lot of moves. He should have been in, he could have been in the end zone that time, except he kind of ran up the back of one of his own players. A lot of people thought he was the top junior college recruit in the country. And at the one, First and goal, so Rob Johnson engineering what he hopes is a touchdown. Handing off this time to Creighton. And they say he's just short. Didn't quite get in. Good effort that time by Cornell Collier, who knifed in. There he is, number 36, got a hand on the runner. See the three guys in the backfield. A lot of power there to lead the play. That's just Creighton just loses his foot and gets tripped up. Boy, Collier, I don't know how he got in there. He really knifed in quickly. Second and goal, just inside the one. 6-17 left in the game. Rob Johnson giving off to Creighton, and he's not going to get in again. It's third and goal. Third down goal. Strutter now will come in at tailback for USC. Boy, this would be adding insult to injury if they wouldn't get this in. They lost on that play. It's back to the one. Third and goal from there. Cal's been able to get good penetration, Gary. They're stopping him before he gets to that line of scrimmage, and he's not going. Astros Clayton didn't try and go up and over. Johnson brings him up. Eye strong right. Struthers going to get the ball. He is in. Touchdown for the Trojans. So Strother, who had that brilliant run early in the game of 92 yards, scores his second touchdown of the day. Here's Struthers coming straight at you. He's had a great day. He gets some good blocking up front. There's a nice little hole. And he takes on the few remaining people between him and the goal line. And he has 153 yards on 17 carries, and that being his second touchdown of the day been a bright spot he and Russell White have had big days California collectively has had a awesome day they're gonna go for two here with 531 left in the game 68 yards six plays took two minutes 24 seconds and Johnson engineering his first touchdown in the college ranks now rolling out and he connects with Curtis Conway and Conway almost goes in to the runway down into that little area. That would have been a long drop if he hadn't stopped himself there. And Travis Hanna is down in the end zone. Also, we have a man shaken up for California, Wilburn. We'll be back to sort it all out. 52-22, California. Well, we have some fallen Conrads for both sides. Wilburn helped off the field for California, and this is Travis Hanna also going off. So after the two-point conversion, bodies everywhere. As the sun's starting to set a little bit behind us into the west across the San Francisco Bay Area. California with a 52-22 lead. 531 still to go in this game. This is usually a real big weekend for USC when they play with one team in Northern California. A lot of the alumni and students come up. Many of the students at USC from Northern California to make a big weekend out of it. But I do believe it will be quiet in the streets of San Francisco and Oakland this weekend. It'll be a long drive back to Los Angeles, huh? 
Yep. Now they're going to try an onside here. Goal forward. They tried this against Notre Dame last week. Almost pulled it off. The bouncing ball is up. It's out of bounds. And at the 50-yard line, California will inherit it. Did you notice that number nine, Mike Pulaski, he looked like he was out there on the field? He was. That was a good hands team. Well, he wouldn't have any other way, would he? <laughs> He'd tough. return punts and kickoffs if they'd let him. That's right. He's got a quarterback's mind and a, a lineman's mentality. Here's an attempt at the onside kick. The good hands team, as they refer to it, is in for Cal. All those people who can catch the ball well. You see right there, Mike Pulaski, number nine, going up in the air for the ball. Also, it was Brett Callen who had a crack at it there for a moment, but it goes out of bounds. Discussion going on over there. Tell you what, Ford has really done a good job of putting that ball down on the turf and getting that high bounce. He did that last week against Notre Dame. However, Cal chooses to take the ball where the ball went out of bounds. First and 10, California. So the penalty against USC, they refuse it, and Cal will take it at the 50-yard line. Larry Smith actually got a 15-yard uh, penalty last week arguing on this play against Notre Dame. He thought uh, his team had recovered. They gave it to the Irish. He was on the field, and they assessed him 15 yards. So Pulaski remains in a quarterback with 5.29 to go. Hand off to White, and White adds another yard to his total. That'll be about 225 for the day. I'm kind of surprised they still have those guys in there with 5.20 to go. McDaniels made the stop. For the records, I guess. None of these guys had ever beaten USC. Well, it's, I don't think it's so much for the record as much as emotionally, White and Pulaski just don't want to come out. Anthony Randolph is now in. He's put to the near side. And off to White again. White to the 45-yard line. And they're applauding, evidently indicating they think they have uh, set a new record or something. I don't know what they're all excited about. He's going to come off the football field. Perry Klein will come in. That's 229 yards that we have for Russell White. As Perry Klein comes in, Pulaski will leave and climb from Malibu, California. 4.28 left in this game. A record-setting day for 10th Light California. 52 points, the most ever scored against USC. And it's 52-22, the score here at Memorial Stadium. I'm Gary Bender along with Lynn Swan as they give off now to Tyrone Edwards, a true freshman out of Walnut, California. And Russell White sits down, a job very, very well done. 229 yards, 23 carries, three touchdowns, and I think he's over his walking pneumonia. I think he's over it. The most yards by an individual rushed against USC this afternoon. The most points scored against USC. Pulaski, one touchdown pass away from the, the record held by Troy Taylor. And Noonan will come in and punt the football. Creighton will go back for USC. Nose high. And Creighton tracks it down at the 11 yard line. That'll give us an opportunity to announce our Chevrolet Most Valuable Players of the game. And I don't think anybody's going to be surprised. For USC, Deion Struthers, 17 carries, 153 yards and two touchdowns. Russell White for California, 23 for 229 and three touchdowns. And Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. Big, big numbers in a game here today. And just now, people are starting to leave the stadium the Cal fans stayed here all afternoon, homecoming weekend. Rob Johnson comes out throwing and hits Morton after the 25. Don't forget, the Giants squaring off against the Eagles. That's always something special. The NFC East, boy, that big, tough, rugged division. Jeff Hostetler against Jim McMahon. Nine Eastern, six Pacific here on ABC. And with the Redskins really controlling the race undefeated in their division, those teams are playing for a wild card, Bert. By the way, we got something to update you on in a moment here after this snap. And we have some movement that will give us time. We understand that Ryan Perry, the defensive end for California, was ejected on that last personal foul during that USC drive. I did not see him taken out of the game, but we want to report that. 
It's been a penalty filled day for Cal, and Perry, the senior, was Dead ejected. Ball. False start. Offense. Still first down. As Boselli again, I think moving at that right tackle. He and the quarterbacks have not been on the same snap count today. Not at all. That's the sixth procedure call against USC. Night games coming up here around the country, in the West here in particular. Here's a pitch coming back now to Creighton, and Creighton nice his way out to the 29-yard line. 3-13 left in this one. Brad Monahan over to make the stop. Miami Idol, they go against the Mountaineers next week. Penn State, they will play Maryland in Baltimore. There's another Memorial Stadium. So there's 14 of them now. Georgia next Saturday <laughs> against Florida in Jacksonville. And I might be stretching it a bit in one game there, but, you know. I did a game there one time. They had no coaches. It was Clemson and Maryland. Both coaches had been uh, told they had to be in the press box. Here's a ball flying loose back to the 25-yard line. As uh, USC able to recover it back there. We will not have a thrifty car rental post-game report as we are running out of time as we approach and have passed the top of the hour. 52-22 the score. Two minutes, 20 seconds left in this one. Michael Jones recovered that one for USC. Sets it up just across the 30-yard line. Rob Johnson, who took him for a touchdown the last time. The freshman seeing his first action at quarterback. And he's on target again. Nice looking throw. Completes it to Johnny Morton. Morton has the first down out to the 43-yard line. Inside two minutes and a very valuable training session right now for the freshman. I watched him warming up before the game started, and he was much more relaxed and calm from throwing the football than Reggie Perry. But I still personally wonder you know, why you take him out off the bench now, put him in a game that he's somewhat prepared for. Well, a game that you're way behind in, and he can't possibly bring you back. But it hasn't been a bad experience, though. That would be the one thing you'd worry about, is Rob would have a bad experience, and he's not having, as he completes it to Morton again. Prior to that completion, we had a 1,024 yards in offense. Add another 19. 1,024? Oh, my. 602 of it by California. Wow. I'm sure if we went through the record book, that would be another one. I'll tell you, Mike Swanson, our statistician, his arms are about three feet shorter right now. First down at the 41-yard line. Johnson again, flushed out, and he's going to go down. That's Monahan, who they think is going to be something special. In fact, they feel Monahan could be the next, next Steve Entman, who is, of course, the All-American for Washington. That's a mouthful. You see Monahan, he's 6'6", 265, a freshman. He's quick. Got very good technique, and you see here, good strength. He comes in, he just gets that shoe and hangs on to it. Five sacks for California. Monahan with that one. He's a guy out of Santa Rosa. And uh, that will be a timeout by USC. They have two remaining. Let's finish up the uh, Pac-10. Stanford winning today over Oregon. Arizona tonight playing host to Oregon State. Well, Bruce Snyder, I guess the only thing you can find to complain about, too many penalties. Other than that, it has been a banner day for the California Bears. Let's go back. Russell White scored first. Five-yard run made it 7-0. Deion Struther, 92 yards. Two yards off the USC record. White came right back, 72 yards to make it 15-7. to They went for two. Sean Dawkins, an 11-yard touchdown reception. The first of three he would catch. Brian, who had... Three field goals, three of four in this game. Got one, came back with another, 23 yards to make it 28 to seven. White with yet another touchdown, one of three for the day, made it 35 to seven. We'll continue in a moment. Rolling out is Rob Johnson. Complete to Morton and he dropped it. Should have had that one. And you know he feels badly. Tough one, he went up for it. Not an easy catch. Ball hits him in the hands and he knew, he knows he should have just held on to it. And so then Reggie Perry scored from two yards out on a keeper to make it 35 to 14 in the third quarter of play. Dawkins with a five yard touchdown catch in the back of the end zone, 42 14. Dawkins from 33 yards out made it 49 14. And then Brian kicked his third field goal 
And that's the most points ever scored against USC, 52 to 22. That's where we are now with a minute 25 left in the game. Johnson back, stepping up, buying some time, gets it off to Creighton. Creighton makes a nice move in the open field to the 36, and Michael Davis made the stop. You know, Cal came into this game averaging, what, 44 points a game, and people looked at that game against Pacific where they scored, what, is 82 points? and say, well, let's throw that one out. Matter of fact, I was saying we had to throw it out and figure out the average without that game in it. Then they come back and score 52 here. So I think they are legit when it comes to big, big scores. On fourth down, Johnson rolling around, and Morton goes high and hit hard by Darrell Brown. Sophomore out of Los Angeles and another flag. Wow, we've had a lot of flags today. But they have roughing the quarterback. Johnson on fourth down, running around, and he got drilled late. Now, you know I'm not happy about him going in the ball game. I've already voiced yeah, that. Yeah, I've kind of gotten that idea. Now, what happens if, if he's supposed to be your future? You bring him in this ball game, your team's down, and he gets hurt. Well, trying to put more points in a game that you're not going to win. You and I were saying this earlier. If some butts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. Remember we were talking about that? That's true. Well, it hasn't happened. <laughs> it hasn't happened, but the possibility is there. scrimmage after the penalty be 22 penalties in the game 16 for 164 that ties the record 16 penalties in a game for california but they'll forget that with this victory here's johnson throwing wallace touchdown larry wallace and rob johnson with his first collegiate touchdown pass 22 yards now are you sorry they brought him in well I, st I still hold my position. Well, I think your position is deteriorating a little bit, Lynn. I don't, as a friend, let me say that. Well, yeah, but Gary, it's 48 seconds on the clock. The score is 52-28. He's come in. He's had some success. He's putting, th he's doing things, and that's very good. But I think the, the value of him coming in and versus the risk was not worth it, no matter what the results are. Well, let's look at the reaction. I think this guy's glad he's in. Watch him. Yes, sir. My first of what he thinks may be many more. go for two here but we have a timeout call by California so Cal has one timeout left with 48 seconds left there's Kent Bear the defensive coordinator of California standing down there with a headset on he was telling me he says I've never been around a football team that plays with more enthusiasm that has more toughness than this team Ooh, look at him he's uh, he's finding something he didn't like well the defensive coaches don't like to give up anything I don't care what the situation of, of the game is and he's looking at his young ball club out there he feels they made a mistake somewhere along the way and he's trying to tell them listen you don't go out there and play sloppy football just because you're ahead that's where people get hurt you know you want to stay in the ball game keep your head in the ball game not give up the touchdown well, he's given up 464 yards. There's now a running total of 1,066 yards in offense today. And California going over 600. You know, last week, USC gave up a lot of yards. They gave up 462 yards against Notre Dame. And so here today, 602. So after the timeout, uh, USC going to go for two. We're going to be joining in progress the third round of the Tour Championship. Some of you who have tuned in expecting to see that. This game running a little bit long with 48 seconds left in the game. 52-28 the count. And uh, USC going to go for two. The Tour Championship coming up following this one here on the West Coast. Pitch comes off to Creighton. And Creighton is going to take it in for the touchdown. And so... Rob Johnson has engineered two scoring drives since coming in, and he's cut it to 52-30, and Kent Bear's not happy. Titus Tuiosisopo is down there now at about the one-yard line, shaken up on the play. Here's Titus, his brother Nave, Manu. They've had uh, quite a football family I think I did call that a touchdown that was a two-point conversion a moment ago for Creighton makes it 52 30 we've had so much scoring today you're getting touchdowns and two-point conversions mixed up 
Well, we've got some time now to recognize the executive producer of ABC Sports is Jack O'Hara. The coordinator producer of ABC's College Football is Bob Goodrich. Jim Ressler produced our game today. Bill Webb, our director. Our technical director, Averill Perry, my friend down there in Cuba. We spent a lot of time together. Associate director, John Del Vecchio. Joe Alvarado, our unit manager. Technical operations manager, Peg Reimer. Renit Larone and Chris Schachner, the assistants to the producer. Our statistician, Mike Swanson, who earned his keep today. Our spotter, Joe Sullivan. A lot of new people in the game today. Computer statistics, Brian Gordon, who came up with the 13 Memorial Stadiums. Did you know type thing? Braxton Banks. He was waiting for that one. I know, and Braxton Banks, the fighting Irish guy from Notre Dame. Andrea Bryant, who does such a great job for us up here in the booth, our booth coordinator, and our sideline coordinator, and our escape artist, Doug Johnson. Maybe just escape guy, not artist. <laughs> we'll take a look on the right side, number 73, Titus Tuyasasopo. See that knee just buckles right there. I got a quiz for you. Mike Swanson, my statistician, came up with a great quiz. He says, Where he gave what? it to you so you could ask him. I got I worked yeah. on this. <laughs> he yeah, said, thank you, Gary. Name there those are stadiums three first. colleges that have had three quarterbacks play in the Super Bowl. Three colleges. Let's see, Cal. Was Cal one of them? They started, I should say, in they the Super started. Bowl. Does that make a difference, started or played? Yes, Hell, yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Was, was I'm, Cal I almost them, blew. Was Cal thing. one of them since we're here? Uh, yes. Okay, that's one. Uh, Notre Dame, let's see, Joe Montana? Yeah. Okay. But you got to name them. You got to name some. Well, I had Cap, Montana. And? Okay, and uh, Louisiana Tech, if you count Bradshaw. Well, you'll never get the third one for Cal, I'll bet you. Oh, there's a third one? For, yeah. From Cap? Yeah, there's three from each school. Cal is Morton, Camp, and Ferragamo. How about that? That's right. I forgot about Morton. And Ferragamo played against us. That's right. Alabama's the other one. Namath, along with Starr and Stabler, and Notre Dame, Daryl LaMonica, Joe Montana, and Joe Theismann. Max Fancher is now in. We thought we'd just, you know, text. Throw, a throw that there. one out there, huh? Yeah, why not? This game's over. 27 seconds left in. And I come away here even more impressed with this California football team. They'll go to 7-1. and one. They now are 4-1 and one in the Pac-10. Still in the run for the Roses. Somebody's going to have to help them, though. Somebody's going to have to knock off Washington, and Washington tie somebody for California to be alive. USC will go to 3-5. and five. Two and three in the Pac-10. And a backflip by Perry Klein, the quarterback. And that ends it. 52-30. And Perry Klein, remember he did this in the Oregon game. Watch him. There it is. I tell you what, the guy maybe should be a gymnast. 52-30 for Lynn Swan. I'm Gary Bender saying so long for Memorial Stadium. A record-setting day for the 10th-ranked California Golden Bears.